Uh, I call this meeting to order. Please make sure your mics are muted. Um, before we start, we have, um, the rules of the procedure bylaw be waived for this meeting that pertains to electronic voting. For this meeting, we will continue to vote by the show of hands. The reasoning behind this has been previously committed, com committed communicated by the clerk. Um, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Any declarations of interest? Seeing none, adoption of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Wilson and seconded by Councillor DeRose. Is there any changes to the agenda? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Adoption of the minutes. Council meeting minutes of June 2nd, 2020. Moved by Councillor Hanley, seconded by Councillor Kenny. Are there any errors or omissions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carry. Operation Services Public Forum Committee meeting minutes of June 2nd, 2020. Moved by Councillor Neal and seconded by Councillor Kenny. Are there any errors or omissions for those on that committee? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carry. Mayor's report. <clears throat> Niagara's 12 mayors and regional chair offered the following statement yesterday regarding the announcement of Niagara Region moving into phase two of the provincial government's reopening framework. This afternoon, the Premier of Ontario announced that Niagara would be moving into stage two as of this Friday at 12.01 a.m. This means many businesses and public facilities may begin to reopen by incorporating measures to prevent the spread of infection. This announcement means that COVID-19 in Niagara has been slowed to the point where some normal activities may resume with the assurance that we continue to take steps to limit the spread of the virus. The decision to move, to move Niagara into stage two was made by the province based on local data around COVID-19 and included a consultation with the Medical Officer of Health. We are pleased to see this announcement and look forward to our economy moving safely, reopening so people can get back to work without overwhelming our health care system. Thank you, Niagara. We want to thank everyone for their tireless efforts to combat COVID-19. It is your commitment that is allowing us to reopen our community and economy. We know how frustrating, isolating, and challenging it has been to miss your friends and loved ones. We know how hard it has been to miss a steady paycheck and to postpone or even cancel major life events. We thank our businesses making many sacrifices, and we want them to know that we are looking at all options to support them through the recovery. We also want to thank our frontline health care workers, public health professionals, and essential workers. You keep us safe, fed, and informed during this challenging time. Taking the next steps together. As we move into stage two, we want you to remember to support your local businesses. Spending your hard-earned dollars at a local retailer, restaurant, or attraction will make a difference as we move forward. While the threat of COVID-19 has not disappeared, you are encouraged to resume some normal activities should you feel safe to do so. Businesses across Niagara have spent the last several months preparing and they are doing everything possible to ensure their operations are sa as safe as possible. It is important to remember that while there is no way to avoid all risks, you can take steps to be safer. Remember to maintain physical distancing. Wash your hands frequently. Avoid touching your face and remember to wear a face covering when keeping a two meter distance is not possible. Continue to stay home if you are not feeling well and get tested should you feel it is appropriate for you. We are starting to take steps to find our new normal and this means we cannot let our guard down. We all must work together to support each other and keep each other safe. Remember to do your part to stay safe, Niagara. We still have a long way to go, but we are confident and we will make it together. 
And that was the media release. The Thorold Community-Wide Food Drive for Community Care took place on Sunday, June 14, 2020. Thank you to all those who volunteered by setting up drop-off points and handing out flyers. Thank you, One Thorold, for sponsoring this great community event, and Hilda Vanderclip for the event organizer. Councillor Neal and Regional Councillor Whalen hosted two drop-off locations. A big thank you to all those who contributed food or made a monetary donation to this much-needed cause. Here is the res early results from the food drive. 6,600 pounds of food were collected and $1,288 in monetary donations. And that was a huge increase over the first year that they did this when they collected 4,500 pounds. On Saturday, June 27th, and Sunday, June 28th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., the Thorold Legion Branch 17 will be hosting a bottle drive and food drive. The bottle drive will help support our Legion during these COVID-19 pandemic unprecedented times where they are experiencing a significant loss in revenue. The collection of non-perishable food items are to support community care. Two great causes in our community. On Sunday, June 7, 2020, I attended a small Decoration Day ceremony at Memorial Park. This ceremony was held respecting COVID-19 restrictions and I laid a re wreath while representing all levels of government, federal, provincial, regional, and the city of Thorold. Thank you, Royal Canadian Legion Branch 17 Thorold for hosting this important ceremony. Is there a sound problem? Where? No. Do you have no sound? Hey? Can everybody else hear? I can hear you. No. I can hear. Okay. I can hear. Congratulations to Jim Dixon and Gary Black on their upcoming retirements. I can't hear anything. Because he's outside? It's your Wi-Fi connection, Councillor DeRose. Yeah. Congratulations to Jim Dixon and Gary Black on their upcoming retirements. Jim's last day of work is June 19th. Retirement date is June 30th after 32 years of service. And Gary's last day of work was today, June 16th. Retirement date is July 31st after 30 years of service. Thank you both for many years of dedicated service to the City of Thorold. All the best. Enjoy a long and healthy retirement. I am pleased to welcome Marco Marino to the position of Manager of Economic Development. This position, while always important, is even more important during these COVID-19 unprecedented times. Marco brings with him many years of local Niagara experience. Updates on the progress of two long-standing uh, safety issues for Council. The new guardrail addition on the north side of Highway 20 s Bend, located on the east side of the canal in Allenburg has been completed. The speed reduction on Merritt Road between Cottemeyer Road and Merrifield Highway will come to Regional Council in July as part of a delegated authority report and should be implemented shortly thereafter. The region has asked for the NRP to monitor that area for speeding with selective enforcement checks in the meantime. In closing, there is a report coming to Council this evening regarding Canada Day 2020 celebrations and that Council endorse a regional virtual Canada Day celebration and the proposed local Canada Day programming for 2020. This is a proposed celebration that is very different than what we are used to due to COVID-19. And that ends my mayor's report. And we move on to, uh, is, is there any civic recognition? 
Seeing none, presentations. And I have Nelson Pariera, Metroland Media, Niagara This Week, Reprint Medium Distribution Bylaw 84 2020. Nelson, are you there? I am indeed. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Thank you. Your Worship, Yugulani, members of council, thank you for the opportunity to address our concerns with respect to bylaw 84 2020 which is before you this evening. I am joined by our publisher and vice president of community brands, Kelly Montague, director of regional distribution and operations, Charlene Hall, Karen Woods, director of distribution for the Niagara region. In the interest of time, I will turn it over to Charlene Hall to address our concerns as outlined in our letter distributed to each of you. Charlene. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I apologize if I'm a little bit uh, stunned in this uh, it's our my first uh, zoom meeting so i've made some talking points and in the interest of time i'm just going to start to start there and uh and move forward um first and foremost I'd like you to know that niagara this week is part of the community we bring lots of work to the community not only through staff but through contracted carriers drivers transport truck uh, operators etc we bring, we bring reputable news to the community and to limit the reader's ability to receive that news is a huge problem, especially if we're their only source of information. We all know that freedom of the press is fundamental to our society. Think about what the outcome could have been had uh, we not been able to reach folks to help them through the uh, uh, stopping the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Especially now, citizens need the retail value we bring them. These are tough times and every penny counts, uh, and especially for countless households now. Equally important is the fact that businesses need us. Now more than ever, they need not just to recover, but to actually survive this situation. The work we bring usually is completed by the most vulnerable. English as a second language, uh, special needs, uh, young people. Our papers are deliver, are to be delivered by to customer-owned properties. And so that means that we're not supposed to be delivered to sidewalks, roads, boulevards, et cetera. And any deviation from this is dealt with through the management of the con through management of the contractor. The expectation set out under the contract includes termination for non-compliance. And while I know that uh, Councillor Longo, you've had some issues in past, and I apologize that I wasn't able to uh, put my hands on our communication earlier. I know that we had uh, some conversation in 2018, um, and unfortunately it took me some time to find your address or I would have proven to you that although we're not perfect, we would have, uh, we would have hopefully made you a little more satisfied with the, with the previous situation that you've had recently. But the reality is that the majority, or sir, excuse me, the, the vast minority of, of complaints that we've had through any of our newspapers has to do with stop delivery requests or bag and toss delivery. Now, while we will hear from people about bag and toss delivery, once we explain the situation and they understand why it is, it rarely results in a stop delivery. The, the other reality is, is that we have a large, large number, if we're gonna get a concern of people who wanna let us know when they don't receive delivery. And to be extremely transparent, because I know that you folks would not sort of have any um, relevant information to what our percentages are, should you choose to make the, um, the bag and toss delivery something that isn't able to carry on, what ends up happening is, is that your calls will, will um, increase and they'll increase to a large degree, um, to an unmanageable degree. We hear literally um, from more people for non-delivery by a large, large uh, uh, difference than the actual uh, stop, stop delivery or the bag and toss delivery. Um, like any other business, we're not perfect. We, you, 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 we have our issues um, and we're evolving, but you won't find anyone or any team that is more committed to trying to make a problem better. And uh, bag and toss delivery is something that is not our first choice. Obviously we would prefer mailbox or, or uh, to the, the front doorstep, but we never leave a route knowingly undelivered. 
And that is because people who advertise with us or who are looking to us to get the information they need, they, they require us to make sure that we hold true to that promise. And at times we're unable to do that in a manner that is our first choice. Sometimes we're required to do the bag and toss delivery. And that can be for any number of reasons, from an ill carrier uh, to a death in the family, to uh, a carrier, a reliable carrier hasn't been found for the route, or to the point where a not reliable carrier has had to be dealt with. And in those instances, we have what we call emergency coverage crews, and those crews will at times have more capacity or less capacity than we need them to have. But we can't just leave people undelivered. It's unfair to the people who pay us. It's unfair to the people that rely on us. So as I said earlier, we do require that the bag and toss delivery is done to a customer owned property. And if it's not, that needs to be managed. Having said that, we have had this concern come up and obviously we are just so interested in working with you guys to make sure that we take care of this problem so that you are able to answer a citizen who's not happy with that delivery. And what we have done in other uh, cities is we have created a button, if you will, or a link on the website where a uh, customer can be um, uh, directed to uh, click on the link and put in their concern. It's right on the city website. So um, they, they know that you have been talking to us and they know that you have been keeping us honest in what we're trying to accomplish. And it goes right to the director of circulation <laughs> who then deals with the issue directly so that you know that your citizen has been given the highest resource to uh, manage what concerns your citizens have. To finalize, um, I, I just want you to know we're evolving and kids don't, you know, we don't have a lot of children these days that are looking for paper routes. They're very busy with, you know, after school, events and um, extracurricular activities. We have quite a few more now applying since uh, none of that's going on, but we are part of your com community and we cover those food drives and we, we cover city hall and we you know, deliver the retail message to the, to the residents. And we take care of seniors who don't necessarily understand or have access to internet and um, or folks that don't have the money to afford internet. We provide that printed copy so folks have a resource. And to silence that as we evolve, I, I think would be a shame since we are just as a company so committed, so committed to making sure that we satisfy what you need us to do to make sure that you can answer to your citizens and that we can answer to our customers and readers. I think that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Arlene. Um, so I'm going to uh, make, I just wanna make two comments before I open the floor for questions by councillors, okay? Um, regarding um, the uh, email that, uh, that was sent out, I just wanna to touch base on uh, it, um, the two relating to me. It said May 25th that I received an email <laughs> And didn't respond I want you to know I did receive the email and I sent it to our city clerk who sent it out to all councillors uh, the email was addressed to me but I sent it to the clerk and it went to all councillors and the reason why I didn't respond because at the end of the email it was very clear it said if you have any questions or would like to chat further please feel free to call me and uh, I didn't feel that need I felt that the email was very well written and addressed uh, the questions I would have had, but I made sure it went to council so that councillors could read it and that phone number was there if they wished to call. Um, and then it referenced me on January 2nd. Um, January 2nd to January 11th, I was on vacation and I went back and looked through my emails and I did not receive an email on January 2nd that I could find. So I just wanna address those two situations to let you know that the, when we did get the correspondence, it was not only um, delivered to me, but I made sure it got delivered to all of council. Okay, so now Thank I'll turn you. it over and open the floor for questions. Any questions of our presenters? Councillor Longo. 
And then I have Councillor DeRose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through, um, through you to the um, First, I'd like to make a comment. Um, at the beginning, you said it was uh, like I was trying to limit freedom of the press. I think uh, I'm going to take exception with that, and I'm not going to be free on that. Uh, the last thing I'm trying to do is, is solve the news. Um, but I do have some questions uh, regarding the method of delivering and the way you conduct business. Uh, my first question. Hear you because something's the matter with your speaker. There you go. Please. I know, we're just addressing. Can you hear me? The nose was having problems earlier too. So was I. <laughs> One second. Um, just wait, Councillor Longo, until we get this technical issue addressed, please. Okay, try again, Councillor Longo. Can you hear me? It's very muffled. Just hold off, Councillor Longo, until we get this. I think it, I think it might be on our end. Renault's had trouble too earlier tonight. As yeah. he came on, there was back feed. Carmen's had trouble. My Anthony's had trouble. It might be something with the cook-up itself, not, I think, individual councillors. Well, yours is clear. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're muffled. Try to get Renault's to speak and see what happens. Is it okay? Can anybody hear me? Okay, yeah. So we're okay, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Sorry. It's just that, yeah, because earlier my nose was not to interrupt, but. Councillor Longo, if you go down to the microphone, there's a little up arrow. Uh, if you go there, then click on leave computer audio and then try rejoining. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay thank you. You're um, nice and clear now. Okay, good, thank you. I'll We're start back from on. The then. Are we back on? We're back on. You're go ahead, Councillor Longo. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. I just want to say I take exception. It, it made it sound like I was against freedom of the press, and there couldn't be anything further from the truth. A response from Niagara this week to our citizens who request. Uh, that um, delivery uh, not be done at their address. It's as simple as that. Uh, there's been multiple residents who've asked to have it stopped and nothing's been done. Uh, it's fallen on deaf ears and it's come to this point where we feel we need to, uh, um, again, there's a couple issues here. We need we need some response from Niagara this week. I think we they, you need to be a better corporate citizen. I'll come right out and say it. I think throwing plastic bags on people's boulevards and driveways isn't a good way to do business. And if people don't want that, you need to respect it. They need to be given the option to opt out and you need to make it clear on how they can do it. And we need to have some uh, repercussions if you don't follow through with it. And that's all I have to say. Is there anyone else? I had uh, Councillor DeRose, was, and then I'll get Councillor Hanley after Councillor DeRose. Councillor DeRose, you're up. Yeah, I'm just, uh, one of the things that concerns me is the safety issue. Um, a driver driving, I look at addresses, throwing newspapers. Um, I feel people in our community are in danger. I understand. I, I, I know it's a rhetorical question because I know what you're going to say. But can I ask Charlene?
Go ahead. Ask your question, please. Okay. The first point I was trying to make was about the safety. We of got our that. Citizens. It stopped when okay. you were asking the question. I'll let you. I'm going to go to Councillor Hanley, and we'll see if we can get that resolved with uh, with Matt. Thank you. Okay, Councillor well, Hanley. My 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 concern is the litter, the litter end of it, and that stuff. I just got up while I was here to look at my neighbor's driveway. There's two newspapers in the driveway right now, and it usually accumulates more. And unless someone comes on the sidewalk and picks one up, they don't. And that's at uh, 33. Uh, next door to me so that's my issue too and that stuff and i do know myself too that a lot of individuals have called and do not want the paper and uh on social media i've received and even recently about people the biggest concern is with snow blowers and in the winter time even though this year may have been a mild winter and issues with that and damage and the way people have been finding it I have no problem with the delivery of it, but I'd like to see it. You know, you might have to up the ante a little as a corporation and pay people a little more and get it hand delivered uh, to the mailbox and be a good corporate citizen. You know, uh, especially in today's environment. And this was happening long before COVID-19 and that stuff. We were having issues, you know, and I, I respect it. I read the Niagara uh, this week all the time, but I believe you do have issues and you're not new to this. That to me is an issue too. This has been a long gone standing uh, concern with the citizens of Thorold. So you do have issues with it. We're not, you know, against the media end of it and that stuff, but uh, there has to be a significant change so that someone like me isn't getting phone calls or concerns and that stuff on social media in regards to it. I could probably post it on my webpage and that stuff and get quite a few responses, okay. but that's all I have to say. Thank you, Councillor Hanley. Is there anyone else with any questions? I got, uh, we'll, we'll try Councillor DeRose again and see how, he's, how his connection is here. Mayor, can you hear me now? Yeah. Hello? Can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, question. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so my problem is with the driving and the throwing of the newspapers. I think in the rural areas, it's okay but not in the urban areas of Thorold. I think it's a dangerous situation. So um, why, why don't we have people on the ground? You just said there's people now that are looking for employment. Um, I was a newspaper, proud newspaper carrier for the Standard. I know uh, Councilor Longo was when we were little and there's probably more of us. Uh, I was very proud to do it. I don't see why we can't do that. I know it's gonna cut into your profits, but I think it's not in the best interest, interest of the city in the proper part of Thorold, the, the urban area, to be driving around, throw newspapers. I really don't. I think it's a huge safety issue. Um, is there, and there's a lot of liability there. So can you respond to that, please, one of you? Are they still on? Hi there, sorry. I'm Go getting ahead, Charlie. a little clunky with this. Um, so I've got a few answers. I'm trying to write down some of the questions as they have been asked. Uh, Councillor DeRose, the, uh, the drivers are uh, delivering door-to-door uh, -to, -door to households and the only addresses that they have to recognize are the ones that are stop deliveries. Um, obviously we are, um, it's not our favorite part of the delivery and it's meant to be an emergency coverage. And yes, I did tell you that there are more people in the last two weeks or, or, or four weeks, I guess would probably be um, looking for paper routes. But the reality is, is that I was a carrier when I was young, my kids were carriers for, you know, seven and eight years respectively. But unfortunately it's, um, it's something that over time has, has been, you know, it's been going away. Kids just don't want to do them or parents don't want the responsibility or there is, you know, other concerns in terms of their, their schedules. Um, 
It's not a pay issue. Um, and when we use an emergency uh, coverage uh, team, they are actually paid a premium because they're actually taking on routes that we could have maybe found out about a death in the family 10 minutes ago. And while I know that we have some routes that have been on an emergency coverage situation more than we want them to be, um, or longer than we want them to be, that's about the fact, uh, Councillor DeRose, that we can't find potentially a uh, reliable carrier in that neighborhood at that time. Doesn't mean we stop trying. Um, so that's speaking to that piece. Um, if Can I answer a couple of the other questions? Is that appropriate? Yep, go ahead. Um, so uh, Councillor Longo, my talking points were in no way meant to imply or even outright state in any way, shape or form that this was, that freedom of the press was something that you were trying to affect. What I was saying was that by having a ban of bag and toss and us not being able to have other options for emergency coverage, we would in fact have to not deliver to those households. And so I wasn't saying that you wanted a freedom of the press to be, um, to be stopped or hindered in any way, shape or form. It would be an outcome of a inability to uh, do co emergency coverage on paper routes. Um, stops and stop deliveries have been part of our con our company since the day we started publishing new newspapers. You absolutely can stop delivery. We have a system that tracks delivery, but I, I can tell you categorically, it's it's one of the hardest parts for some of our carriers, and primarily it's the carriers that have English as a second language or have some special needs. They're so eager to do a good job and to them doing a good job is making sure the customer gets the product that sometimes it takes us a little bit of time to ensure that they understand that just as important is the need to not deliver when someone doesn't want it. So yes, we do absolutely have a system that covers it. We have, we've had them since the, the beginning of time, but we do, sure, we have carriers that get, uh, that get confused. We also have carriers that, um, uh, you, th they change over. So you get a carrier that's been on a route for three years and a, a customer doesn't get a paper for three years and they're very happy, get a new carrier and that through learning curve, they mess up and they don't, they don't recognize the stop properly. And you have to remember, we have to give folks a chance. So sometimes for folks who have to call us a second time or a third time, th they could be very frustrated. But if you were a young person or a person that was of special needs, I have to give you a chance. So I have to talk to you first and give you a chance to fix it. Then I talk to somebody the second time with a little bit more um, opportunity to sort of drive home the point, a parent, a guardian, a social worker, whatever the case may be. And then on the third opportunity, we terminate. So, so that can be a little frustrating for folks. We do try to explain it. We do try to let folks know why, why you're having to call in a third time. And in terms of looking for um, a, a response to this, um, we do have a system that works. Does it work always? No. But I mean, walk into Canadian Tire or any other business and they always, you know, everybody wants them to have their, their staff operating in a manner that they want them to work, the gas station, whatever the case may be. Everyone has challenges of some sort. It's how you handle it. And we're committed to handling it. And so when you say we need a solution, that's what I'm talking about. Let's put that link on your website so that when Councillor DeRose gets a phone call or something comes on Councillor Handley's social media, they can say, um, you know what? We know about this. We're, we're, we're working with the newspaper. If you go on the city website, you'll see a link located, you know, wherever you put it. And that goes directly to the top to handle the problem and they will take care of it or they will re be responsible to respond to us. And we have zero problem with working with you to make sure that that happens. And then finally, uh, I think it was Councillor Handley, you said that your neighbor has accumulating papers. That I, mean, I looked out the door, I looked out right now, there's two sitting in the driveway right now. Yeah, so, so that is a carrier issue. Our carriers, when they are hired, are, are taught and trained that if a newspaper is still outside from the previous week, they are not to leave another paper. 
but and, they toss it at my place. They, it's not a guy that delivers it door to door. It's a guy driving down the street. I over. understand. Yeah, I understand. But uh, but I, I I can tell you categorically, they can see if there's a paper there and they need to be dra- traveling at a safe speed that they can see that there's a paper there and that they are required to not leave a paper. And furthermore, if there's an accumulation, they're required to stop and pick them up. And if that isn't happening, we will deal with the contractor. The reality is, is that <clears throat> perfect, they're not perfect, but certainly we have a team that is dedicated part of this community. And this is not what we want. We want you guys happy. We want our readers happy. We want our advertisers happy. So obviously uh, we're committed to doing what we need to do to make a change for you to have that solution, but also to carry on doing a good job. Okay, thank you. Um, I've got Councillor Wilson, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, through you to the presenter. Um, you know, I, I've only, this is my first time on council, but since the beginning of us being elected, I've talked about um, the safety of, of this. And I know Councillor Rose already went through that, but I've been preaching that since the beginning. I mean, I've never, you say it's an emergency delivery system, but I've lived in Thorold for um, 10 years and I have never seen that paper delivered to my home by hand. So I find it hard to believe this is a temporary situation. Um, we've been here for 10 years and in that time, me and my kids delivered, I say me and my kids because I helped them, uh, we delivered other papers, right? Um, so so I don't know that I fully buy that this is temporary. I think this is this happened and it's ongoing. Um, safety, I've had, I've almost been hit with one of those papers. It's, they're not driving at a fast speed. Um, I was on the sidewalk playing with my kids and got one thrown and went right between me and my daughter. Is getting hit by a paper going to kill me? No, but it's one person in the car dro- driving and throwing out a newspaper. And I think as an employer, your responsibility is to ensure that they are doing their job safely, not only for them, but also for the people around them. So I don't think it's even legal in my opinion, or I think you should be very worried about the liability that you have knowing that you have people out there driving and throwing paper at the very same time. It's not legal to do it, it's distracted driving. And as an employer, it's your responsibility to make sure that they're doing things safely. They're doing their job safely for them and for people around them. So I think it's in your best interest you should actually be somewhat excited by this bylaw because it's going to make sure that your company um, doesn't get sued. And, and that's personally how I see it because, you know, you, I don't understand how you could get now fined $3,000 for being on a phone. And I'm not condoning that, but I can have a pile of papers on my car and throw it out doing 30 kilometers an hour in a subdivision. That does not make sense to me. So I'm sorry. Um, I'm not against people getting the paper. The paper is great, but it doesn't end up at my door. It ends up at the end of my driveway or just past the sidewalk, which is still city property, actually, because I think it's about three feet past the sidewalk towards my house. That's my property. And it's dangerous. It's just downright dangerous. And I think it's your responsibility to make sure these people are safe and to make sure we're safe when you're de- you're delivering your paper. So I'm sorry. I, uh, I don't want to hinder your business in any way, but my first priority and I think our first priority is making sure our community is safe and uh, and we care about your drivers too. And I, I would hope that you do as well. Am I able to respond? Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, so first of all, we do not, uh, uh, just a, a technicality, um, the folks doing the delivery are um, contractors. No, no, no difference uh, to us in terms of safety. I just want to make sure that I'm clear about it so that I'm not... Uh, you know, accused of being not transparent about sort of how we how we're um, how we're set up. Um, contractors are not encouraged to drive down your road at 30 kilometers an hour uh, and toss the paper. Uh, most times they're supposed to be creeping along and uh, close to stopping and usually have a second person in the car. And certainly any safety issue whatsoever is absolutely our issue as well. Um, I know what you're saying, and that's why I tried to drive home the point about the temporary coverage, because I'll tell you honestly, if somebody from your route called in today and said that they wanted to be a carrier, that would be off that driver that fast. But some areas just don't have that kind of 
that kind of response to a paper route. Now we advertise, we do flyers, we do social media, we go through Indeed. So we're always looking and we're not gonna stop looking, Councillor Wilson, for a, a newspaper carrier on your route. But the reality is that if there is no bag and toss, uh, within our, uh, sorry, for our business, we will not be able to deliver some of those routes. That's that's the bottom line. And so by passing this, I just need to be transparent. It means that we won't be delivering to some households. And that is the reality of it. And I just, I just need to drive home the point that we really, really honestly want to work with you to try and make the things that you're concerned about to, to make them feel um, better and be better. But should we ch change um, or, or pass a bylaw that prohibits bag and toss, we are in effect going to have to tell those customers that we are unable to deliver there unless they know someone who wants to be a door to door carrier. And um, unfortunately, that's the reality of the business. And I know that you're hearing from some citizens. I know this, but I'm, I, I, I'm telling you as an expert in this, and I've dealt with this, everyone from the city of Mississauga right to the U.S. border. Um, the folks not receiving even part of the paper, let alone the paper, are much more vocal about what they're being limited to than the folks who are stopping it. So what we're saying is, let us work with you. Let us put the, the link on the website, um, allow, allow us to, to start to address some of your concerns and there's time to do this down the line if you don't think we're doing enough or you don't feel like we, we've, we've hit the mark, but we've, we know what we're doing here. And I, I really feel like if you just give us an opportunity to work with you, the citizens will be happier, we'll do better, our carriers and your citizens will continue to earn money and you will feel better about the job we're doing. Thank you. Perfect, and I think the best way for you to do that is make sure that you're, when you contract, employees, they're a contractor, but you can require your contractor to put two people in the car and then maybe they would actually toss the bag to the appropriate location. They wouldn't be driving fast, hopefully, but it's still, even though you outsource this, it doesn't mean that you're not responsible or required to make sure the right thing is happening. True. Um, um, I will say that we are not able to tell them how, uh, because of the, not us, because of, of other legal reasons, but we are absolutely, absolutely required to, um, uh, can require them to do the job in a safe manner. We absolutely can. And honestly, Councillor Wilson, had you called or um, had any, sent an email or anything and let us know that that had happened, Trust me when I tell you, that's a zero tolerance situation. Yeah, but I find that hard to believe because we we have sent letters and we have dressed, addressed this before and I, I'm not interested in having an argument with you, but um, I do believe that yes, you can ask them to do it safely and multiple times and you even admitted mm -hmm. in your conversation that they don't always have two people in the car. I've never seen two people in the car. And I live in Confederation on Keeper Road. I find it hard to believe in such a dense, um, subdivision that there's there's nobody that wants to deliver door to door. So I'm not going to reply anymore. I, I have my opinion. I don't think that I think that you guys have been given a lot of opportunity to fix this and you haven't worked to, with us. And now all of a sudden there's let's put a link and let's do that. And I'm not trying to be argumentative. I just don't think that uh, really you've done your part to make sure that the deliver that the papers were delivered properly. Or safely, I think there's a huge savings in the way that it's done, and I think there's, you know, I don't think there's the the reality of you guys wanting to go the way that we would hope. But and if citizens are going to call and say they didn't get their paper, I'm going to take their call just like somebody who's unhappy about how the paper gets taken, and that's fine. I just rather make sure that we're safe before I worry about getting a paper. Thank you. Um, who have I got next, Councillor Kenny? I got to go through everybody that hasn't spoken first. Yeah, it's just, a, I guess it'd be a point of order. Are we dealing with the bylaw right now or the presenter? We're just dealing with the presenter because the bylaw is coming later. Well, a, a, a lot of this, uh, the rhetoric right now is dealing with the bylaw itself. I think we should just deal with the presenter and then deal with the bylaw later. That's it. 
Okay, thank you, Councillor Kenny. I have Councillor Neal. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Charlene. Um, I've lived on Metcalf Street for over 15 years, and I can't remember the last time that you came past and just didn't toss the newspaper onto the driveway. And from my perspective, again, I'm like most other people around the table there that I delivered newspapers when I was young too. And I think it's your obligation, your responsibility to deliver the newspaper door to door from my perspective. And I think there's no other way of, of talking to you about that. Um, I've looked, I, I'm an accountant by trade and I've looked after a thousand businesses and uh, they're, they're, all their responsibilities are is to make sure that in this particular case, the paper is delivered properly. And, uh, you know, I can't say anything more. The Councillor Wilson said what I was going to say anyways. So uh, I, don't, I don't know. It, it, it's up to you because you're the business to make sure that it goes door to door from my perspective. Sorry, am I speaking? I, I, I appreciate your thoughts. Um, I, I don't think that I would be being honest with you if I told you that our business isn't evolving to some degree and that we do have um, situations where the bag and toss delivery is part of the business. Again, um, I, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned uh, that there's been communication that folks feel like it hasn't been listened to. It's not, it's not how we behave. I, I'm telling you categorically, it's not how we behave um, and it's not how we're led. And I am held to a standard to make sure that people are heard when they want to talk to us. And um, if that's not what folks are feeling here, trust me, that's something that will be dealt with um, as soon as I understand sort of who, who's contacted and, and what responses you did or did not get. Councillor Sentence. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through, through you to the presenter. Um, I, I, since we started on council, the, the first month or the first few months, I think Councillor Neal brought this up and we brought it up many, many times uh, in, in our three years or two and a half years that we've been up. I look back at my records and on February 18th meeting, I believe, I asked for some correlations to have dialogue so that we can get this figured out because I was calling on behalf of senior citizens to say they didn't want it and it kept showing up and I mean multiple times kept showing up at the bottom of their driveways and it was a safety thing for them to get to or some of them just ran over it with their, their lawnmower. So from that perspective we have been trying to to have correlation and conversations with you from the beginning of our term and maybe it was beyond, and it just seems like deaf ears, deaf ears, deaf ears. Now we have this bylaw coming through, and, and I love your paper. I don't have the content, the everything. I, I, I want the information. I want it all. This isn't about this. This is about delivering the paper in a safe and effective manner. And a safe and effective manner is not one person in a car throwing, throwing the, the bags out. It's not someone tossing it at the end of the driveway. It's about getting the paper to the people. And I could see in the rural area, I've had some rural friends say, hey, you know what? I, I, I don't want to lose the paper here and I don't mind them throwing it out, uh, you know, into the drive or in the yard and we pick it up when we come home. Uh, maybe there's tweaking to this, but it, 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 the essence of it is, is to deliver it in a safe and reliable manner. And that's all we've been asked for. That's all I've asked for, for, for the last two and a half years that I've been on. So again, I understand you're coming now and I, I appreciate the, you're coming now, but um, we're just trying to get a little more bite into what we can do for our citizens, for their safety and for their ability to get the paper. So I, I appreciate you coming tonight, but- um, uh, Allow me to I clarify, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I was just gonna clarify, we're coming tonight because it's on the docket tonight. Um, yeah. uh, honestly, I, I, I mean, it's not like uh, we wouldn't have spoken to you any other time. And I know that, Councillor Longo, uh, in as I say, in 2018, had communication directly with me, and I had um, charged people to take care of the issue that he had at that time. Um, 
I'm sorry, I've never had a communication from you. Um, but uh, honestly, I, I would have loved to have the opportunity to have a communication so that I could understand the challenges you're having. Um, but uh, I, I just, I, I'm worried that you think we're here now because we have to be. We would have been here last week, last month. We, we've done bylaw meetings many times to discuss our business. Um, most times we kind of get invited in. And of course, this is a little different times right now. And we sit down and we chat with folks and they sort of do some investigation with us, what we do, what our practice is, what we're willing to do, what's not working for you, all of that good stuff. So it's really odd for us to... Um, come straight to a venue like this because usually we are literally part of your community. Um, and so typically we sit down with you guys and we talk to you about what's bothering you and we try and figure it out. Unfortunately, if, sorry, this is, uh, sorry, it's just a little enhanced right now because we're on the docket with a bylaw as opposed to having a conversation about the needs. If I'm not mistaken, we had a representative from your company here one 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 other time. I, I forget her name, but I believe she was here, and we've had this discussion or a similar discussion uh, when she was here uh, another time. I, I think, unless I've got that wrong. Yeah, no, I believe it was Tracy Travis, who's yeah. a circulation manager, and yeah. um, and I believe at that time, um, as I understood it, that meeting ended in in a in a successful manner. Um, I, if that's not the case, then I apologize because it didn't come to my level. But when I saw this, that's why I said I would like to be part of responding um, because you need to know that from the top, this isn't the way we want things to go. We obviously want to work with you. We obviously want you to be happy with us. We want to be, you know, continue to be part of this community, continue to employ people, continue to, to deliver our product. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Councillor DeRose, go ahead. For you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have to agree with Councillor Wilson, uh, Councillor Neal, Councillor Sentence. Um, Charlene, what I don't understand is people were calling a number and leaving a message they didn't want to get it delivered or speaking to someone. And it, I, from what I found out, it was an out of town number that they totally disregarded. And now we've got the proper number on the site, but it's it's gone so far that I've gotten so many calls that I feel for the residents. And so something has to be done. I'll leave it at that because we can go on and continue this, but yeah. um, I'm going to stick to my, uh, to my, my, uh, I, I, my I fellow would, counselors uh, viewpoint. I'd just love to reiterate that the, that the link on the city website for citizens to use um, through their uh, counselor, pointing them and directing them to that allows the counselor to not have to manage the problem, we manage the problem, and the counselor can see the outcome without it being something that becomes an added job or duty for them. So I'm hoping that you'll give us an opportunity to try that out. It has worked beautifully in every market we've put it in. Thank you. Councilor I think, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll throw you to the presenter. Just two quick things. Charlene, why do you think the city should be responsible to put something on our website for a private business? Uh, I don't think you're responsible to. I'm offering you a resource. Um, certainly, uh, it's not going to change how we would manage a customer if you gave them my phone number or if they called you. We know that through many years of publishing newspapers, we know that many times people actually believe that the city or, or the town owns the newspaper. Uh, I can't begin to tell you the number of times Somebody has said to me, I pay my taxes, give me my paper. So I think that sometimes when these things come to you, it's not only just that they're uh, fed up or that they're um, looking for something in terms of a city response. Sometimes they think that you, you're in charge of it. And I'm not saying that I want you to manage it. I'm saying I'd like to give you a resource so you can stop managing it and a way to hold us accountable to that resource. Do you have the ability on your own website to do something like this? Uh, I, I would imagine so. It's not usually the way that it's done. And I'll tell you why you can link to me directly from our website to ask me to stop delivery of the newspaper. Um, all of the newspapers are handled the same way across the entire footprint. And so it's a, it's a challenging situation in that each um, area wants something done differently. The reason we went to the button with the city or town wasn't because we couldn't manage stop deliveries or getting communication about stop deliveries. It's because 
we wanted to offer, um, and, and truly there's only two uh, cities that, um, that really kind of went down that road, but um, we wanted to offer something that gave counselors the opportunity to go, not only am I listening to you, but I, I'm going to ask you to send an email, hit this link on the city, and I will be able to manage um, keeping an eye on what they do for you because we are holding them accountable. So, so quite frankly, it's not to have you do our business. It's not to have you manage our business. It's to give you something to show your citizens that you're listening to them and that you're holding us accountable to what you're saying. Okay. And one final question for you. Sure. Can you tell me if your drivers are adequately and legally insured to deliver the papers in a bag and toss method? They are required to, pri to provide us with insurance, a valid license, a general liability, a business liability insurance. So, you know, I, I mean, that goes to the lawyers and I don't have one of them on with us, but I know that everything that is required under the law that is, uh, is on our contract and has to be proven to us prior to them being able to sign the contract. Could you send our CAO confirmation that your drivers are legally allowed to throw bag and toss newspapers out of their vehicles, please. I'm going to have to have a, a, a lawyer <laughs> fine. to do that. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So can I get um, any more questions? Because I'm going to bring them by law forward after that. Okay. Councilor Hanley. Councilor Hanley, you're up. No, I was just going to put a motion on the floor that we bring forward bylaw 84-2020. Okay, do I get a seconder for that? Councillor Longo. We've got a motion on the floor to bring the bylaw forward. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, so now we got the bylaw on the floor. Um, bylaw 84-220. And I'll open the floor for discussion before we vote on this bylaw. Go ahead, Councillor Hanlon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, I said I would post something on social media, and I did at 7 o'clock, and the response has been greatly. I posted, how does the public citizens feel about how Niagara this week is delivered? First one, just stop the delivery altogether. Everything online anyway, flip app. Plus, I have students live next door to me, and it collects at the bottom of the driveway. I enjoy getting the flyers and, and going through them. They, This one said they sucked, asked them to stop, lasted three weeks, throw them on my front steps, rain or shine. I don't get one, haven't for years, Gabe calling up, they're always so rude. I hate it, they have hit my vehicle in the past and I find it a waste of paper. I have, new, I have asked numerous times for it not to be delivered to my house any longer. One year during the winter, I had no idea it was in the snow and it clogged in my snowblower, it cost me $120. I enjoy it. Just wish they would throw them all over the people's property. I hate it. Unsolicited. Goes right in the grave bin. Should be outlaw. Much better. Was in the mailbox this week instead of on the ground under the truck. These are all comments that I've just received in the, in the last 17 minutes, whatever, and I'll read you a few more. I like the paper, but they need to start putting them in the mailboxes, not throwing them out in their vehicles at the end of people's driveways or on their lawns. Don't know. They don't deliver to our building anymore. They just last year, but don't anymore for some reason. I can tell you these are thorough residents too. Get them most weeks. I do like reading them. Another one agreed with the first one. You need to put it in the mailbox. I use the app. I pick it up, take it out of the bag, and I put it in the recycling bin. Not much. I never get it, and I live in Confed. We don't get any ads for free anymore, but if they want to pitch it at my house as they drive by, they can keep it. So that's just some of the comments that I just received since 7 o'clock tonight. I have the support of my constituents and that stuff. That proves it, that I'm not taking for discredit anything that you said, but my constituents speak, speak volumes. They've asked for it to be counted. They're tired of it being thrown on their driveways. And this is all just the question I posed at seven o'clock tonight. So that's firsthand right now. So I'm voting as per the bylaw. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Hanley. Anyone else? Anyone else? Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. Yeah, my problem with the uh, the bylaw is um, uh, uh, section six. Any <clears throat> any ele election advertising material which is permitted uh, 
why why would we allow a news not allow a newspaper, but we're going to allow election literature to be thrown on the. A lot of people don't want the election literature in their mailbox neither. So why would we? That's that's in the bylaw. So yeah, I'll, I'll I think I'll, I, I, I'll turn that over to our uh, chief building official, Jason. Just, just, just one more thing. I don't have a problem with giving somebody literature if you're knock on the door. But if they're not home, we shouldn't be leaving literature. And that's what I, I would just like that part of the bylaw looked at. Go ahead, uh, uh, Jason. Jason, did you want to comment on that? Sorry, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so that part of the subsection six that you're referring to, Councillor Kenny, uh, only identifies that if somebody were to post a sign on their property identifying that they do not wish to receive flyers or newspapers at all, um, then they could still receive election material. Um, it's not permitting them to toss it onto the property or anything like that. It's just identifying that they could still receive election material um, that's delivered in a proper manner. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Kenny. Um, any other questions? Go ahead, Councillor Sentence, or any comments? Yeah, I just have uh, one thing maybe to the other councillors, and uh, thank you, Ms. Murth. Um, just for our rural friends out there, uh, uh, sh should we be looking at this in a different way for them, or should we be looking at allowing uh, uh, the system to go into the rural areas where they can still get it in this manner because it, it, it's easier or, or better for them. I, I just, that, that's my only concern. I'm for this bylaw. I just, uh, I don't know about the, uh, the rural areas who expect it and don't mind it as much uh, in the bag and toss system. So just something for us to think about. I. Uh, Council, um, Jason, do you, uh, do you want to address that or how that could be addressed or? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm happy and open to making any amendments to the bylaw that council should uh, find desirable. Um, the first approach at doing this bylaw, uh, this is a relatively new type of bylaw for me to write, but um, I just kept it consistent throughout across the entire city. The way the bylaw is currently written does allow the paper or flyers or whatever the uh, material may be to be delivered in a mailbox or in a uh, designated receptacle. So in the rural areas, uh, it, it is possible that for the paper to be placed in a receptacle or, or a, a mailbox at the road. Um, but again, I'm happy to look or, or amend the bylaw in any way that council feels uh, is appropriate. Um, I will say that uh, keeping it in the receptacles may avoid having papers in ditches and stuff like that, but those are the only comments that I have. Go ahead, Councillor Sentence, did you wanna add? Uh, that, that, that's a good point, that's a valid point. Uh, so thank you, Jason. Okay, anyone else? I got Councillor Wilson. Oh, thank you. Um, through you to uh, to Jason, please, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the only question I had about it was number seven. It's very specific. So in the mailbox, um, in the mail slot on the door set or receptacles. Um, but what about where companies put like, I don't know if we have to be this specific, but they put those door hangers on or they put things in the door what, where they don't have a mailbox or something. Like, do we have to be very, very specific or? Through you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Wilson, uh, no, that we can be as vague or as specific as we would like. Um, to be honest, I didn't think of the door hangers, um, but it, so we could certainly make amendments to make it a little more generalized um, and just prohibit uh, or, or just ensure that the, the flyers or your uh, newspapers are getting delivered to the door um, in some way or a mailbox. Okay, yeah, that'd be perfect. I just don't want to hinder. I know that's like a popular uh, one form of, of um, advertisement that's done by local companies. So I don't want to prohibit uh, that sort of approach either. Thank you. Councilor Neal.
Maybe we can just change instead of on the doorstep, just put at the door. That would cover both. So we got, uh, do you want to make that amendment, Councillor Neal? I'll, I'll make that as a friendly amendment. Friendly amendment. And I got a seconder. Councillor DeRose. Does anyone want to speak to that? Just the amendment. Councillor Hanley. Just on uh, clarification. So, Fred, you want in uh, Section 7? That's what you're looking at? You yeah, section, that? section 7C. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. So that's the amendment. That it's, instead of doorstep, it's going to say door. Is that correct, Councillor Neal? That is correct. Okay. So that's the amendment. Any further discussion on that amendment? Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. You're on mute. Not on the amendment. What? Not on the amendment. Okay. We're just talking about the Not amendment. On. Yep. Okay. All those in favor of the amendment? Opposed? Carried. Okay. So we're back on to the, that amendment's been passed. And now we're on back on to, uh, to the bylaw. And you wanted to speak on the bylaw, okay. Councillor Kenny. Go ahead. Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. Okay, we're out. We're, we're we got to straighten out a few technical difficulties. Hang tight.
We're good? Okay, we, we ended with Councillor Kenny. Uh, was frozen there. Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. Did you have anything? I just got a... Hello? Go ahead. Um, just a, a couple questions for Jason. One would be um, um, the administrative penalty in uh, Section 4. What would it be? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Kenny. Uh, the administrative penalty has not been set yet. That I was waiting to find out whether this bylaw was passed by council. Um, if it does get passed tonight, then I'll bring the amendments to the administrative penalty bylaw uh, at next to the next council meeting. Um, I don't have any specific numbers in mind, um, but I, I would definitely bring something to council by by next meeting. I guess my question, Jason, is because, um, like, Niagara this week uh, spoke today at the meeting. Just, just say um, a question for you. Um, we uh, Canadian Tire and a bunch of other businesses got together and put flyers in a in a bag and did not know them and tossed five hundred out in the city. How would we deal with this if we pass this bylaw? I'm just if for somebody that didn't know, and we're finding one organization, and uh, it, I mean they should know the bylaw. If they do something like that, that's that's the law. But how how would we treat that? Thank you, Mr. Mayor, I suspect we would treat it uh, similar to most other uh, uh, um, violations to other bylaws. We would start by first offense, giving a warning to the individuals, to the company. Um, and on subsequent offenses, we would follow up with a penalty. Okay, thank you. Okay, you good, Councillor Kenny? Okay, Councillor DeRose. Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Jason, would the, would the through start, can, you, can you hear me? Go ahead. Can you hear me, Mr. Mayor? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Jason, just uh, can you clarify three point uh, uh, number three uh, as far as having a sign to tell them you don't want it delivered? And also, would it would would the penalty be per household that had this thrown on their property, or would it just be per incident? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor DeRose. Uh, so to your first question, um, the reason for the sign was only, um, I've looked at other municipalities, there are a few others in, within Canada <clears throat> who have similar bylaws in place. Uh, they all had uh, requirements for signage to be placed on the property to identify whether or not the individuals wanted to receive uh, those those printed materials um the reason i did I, I did think about it for a while and the reason i included it in the bylaw was more for an enforcement perspective so that the bylaw officers had visual evidence as to whether or not uh those residences were choosing to opt out um rather than having to um, search down the companies and determine whether or not these residents were on opt-out lists with that company, uh, which could require needing to get warrants through courts and stuff like that. This was a more uh, easily enforceable approach. But again, I'm open to the suggestions. Okay, Councillor DeRose, any further questions? Go Mr. Ahead. Mayor. Go ahead. I, I, yeah, I, I just find it cumbersome for someone that doesn't want it to have to do that, but that's that's fine. If we if you can tweak that, or if, if, if you're going to go with that, that's fine. Um, and the other thing, Councillor Kenny had asked you um, if someone broke the bylaw, and you said it'd be a warning. So let's say they delivered to a thousand homes in Thoreau. Is that one warning? Go ahead, uh, Jay. Uh, yes, we. I mean, we would need to use a common sense approach if it if it was being delivered to everybody on one day 
um, then I would I would suggest that would be one warning um, as opposed to giving a warning for every single property it was delivered to. Um, but then on subsequent days, uh, if it happened again, then we would proceed with fines. And I think that would depend on what we felt was most appropriate. Um, we could, and, and this would come down to uh, whatever we end up putting in the amendment to the administrative penalty bylaw. Um, but I would suggest there potentially being one fine for the occurrence rather than per property. Uh, because one thing the law does not allow is for the administrative penalties to be punitive in nature um, and finding somebody per property in this case uh, could be deemed punitive by the courts. Thank you. Okay, any further, any further uh, discussion? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to read uh, that leave be given to introduce the following bylaw, bylaw 84-2020, a bylaw respecting the distribution of printed media with the past amendment, and, uh, and that it's now be read a first time. All those in favor? Opposed? Uh, go. Did you get that done? All right. Can you say that again, Mr. Mayor? All those. All those in favor of the bylaw. Okay. Opposed. Okay. Carry. That the bylaw just read a first time, be read a second and third time, and do pass, and the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same. Any rule of this council notwithstanding. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay. Now we'll move back into our agenda. Motions to receive and file minutes or adopt recommendations of council, boards, and committees. Minutes to review for information purposes, moved by Councillor Neal, seconded by Councillor Longo. You see the minutes there. Um, are there any errors or omission that anyone's aware of that they want to raise? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Statement by councillors. Up first, I have Councillor Neal on establish an inventory of lands for affordable housing. Councillor Neal, you're up. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, as you know, affordable housing is front and center nowadays for seniors, families, and homeless. And I know that a number of groups and committees are dealing with this. The Age Friendly Committee being one, the One Thorough Committee being another, the Nonprofit Housing uh, uh, Group being another. So therefore, I would like to see us have an inventory of land so that when somebody comes along, because it was one uh, company that came recently looking for land for affordable housing, that we do have an inventory of land. And since we now have a new economic development officer in Marco Marino, that maybe one of his um, initiatives is to at least take, do an inventory of land, not just with the city, but in the private sector too, so that any piece of land that might be available or at least looked at for affordable housing to be on our inventory. So Mr. Mayor, I would move and second by Councilor Kenny that the city of, that the city create an inventory of city owned lands and lands from the private sector that can be of use for the purpose of affordable housing. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor and we have a seconder. Does anyone want to speak to that motion? I got Councillor Hanley. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, I have a book here. The city had done one some years ago and I still have it, a municipal building inventory. And I actually, as soon as he mentioned, I went up, I still have it on my thing here. It's probably maybe a decade old. But it could be a start, and I don't know if the city may have one on hand. They may, but it's 
quite thick. And it's got a list of every piece of property that the city of Thorold owns. It's acreage, and it was done a few years ago. And that gives us the basis to try to start selling some lands to alleviate the tax burden on the citizens of Thorold. And I do not know that we have land, even Habitat for Humanity would like to get their hands on a couple pieces of land. But the previous council didn't want to give it away. They wanted to sell it, Habitat for Humanity. So we do have a booklet. Yes, it we do. It is available. He's, uh... We and, haven't. Uh, in, uh, it's quite extensive. We haven't. I just our city clerk just informed me they have that. Yes, yeah. that'll be a good starting point. Anyone else? Seeing none, do you want to read that motion? Uh, I'll get our clerk to read the motion. The motion on the floor is that the economic development officer be directed to prepare an updated inventory of city city and private sector lands appropriate for affordable housing. Are you good with that, Councillor Neal? I am very good with that. Okay. If, if, if I could just say one thing, you know, I do know, I'm not going to go through the book now, but I knew, do know that years ago we did own a piece of land in the Thorold South area. I think it was Bartlett Street. We owned about six lots. I believe at one time, unless we sold the land through tax sales and that, but the only reason we acquired it because it was inaccessible and needed a road allowance to be done, but it'd be sufficient for housing. They were looking to do that one time ago, just to make that comment Thank in that you. area. Thank I you, think Council. It's part of that street. Okay, so the motion's on the floor. All those in favor? Opposed? Carry. Thank you, Councillor Neal. Um, up next, Councillor DeRose, uh, trees infringing on neighbor's property. You're up, Councillor DeRose. For you, Mr. Mayor, um, there's been a concern of uh, several citizens recently. I know we all got an email uh, several weeks ago in regards, but I've gotten several calls since of trees that are infringing on neighbors' properties. And after extensive conversations and dialogue with Jason, um, it's a very difficult, tricky situation. But personally, um, uh, the, I, I received a couple notices this week that state it's also causing debris in their swimming pools and the neighbors don't get along and there's no end in sight to what can happen. My personal belief is that if it's your tree, you should maintain it if it's on your property. Um, so I'm looking to Jason, maybe if I can get council support to maybe look at some legal avenues or get some outside advice on what we can do. Because I, I personally, I know if I had a neighbor's tree uh, overhanging on my property, and it was messy, I'd be pretty upset. And uh, so I think it's the homeowner, we, we do it for grass. If, if, if your grass is too long, bylaws called. If He's frozen. cars parked there, that's Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Go Mayor, ahead. can you hear me? No, okay. I can't. Yeah, I'd just like to get some comments from councillors and maybe a, a comment from Jason on, on what we can do about this. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I have Jason uh, first. Go ahead, Jason. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as Councillor DeRose identified, uh, he has spoken to me on a couple of occasions with regards to this matter. I have done a little bit of preliminary research. Um, I can say that uh, boundary trees, so those are trees that are planted uh, on or adjacent to a property line are regulated by provincial law under the Ontario Forestry Act. Uh, but any other tree that's on private property where the canopy just overhangs the property line, um, I don't believe are, is regulated by any other uh, legislation that I'm aware of. Um, I'm happy to look into this further if Council should wish for me to do so. Um, I believe I would need to seek legal advice on this one because it, it, there is a long, long history of uh, these type of matters coming to the courts. Um, and so I would, I would need to seek their professional opinion. Thank you. Um, I had Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to uh, Jason Simpson um, or whomever can answer. My understanding is if a tree is hanging onto your yard from your neighbor's yard, you can cut those branches that overhang your yard. Um, but that's about the extent of it. Is is that correct, Jason? Go ahead, Jason. Uh, 
Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, to be honest with you, I don't want to make assumptions. Um, I often advise people with those type of questions to seek legal advice um, because there's so many there's so many arms to the to this that um, I don't want to give the wrong information. So um, honestly, I don't have the right answer for you. I can speculate, but I don't want to do that in this forum. So um, all I can say at this point is I would need to seek legal advice on, on what the rights are of individuals in these matters and what authority the city has to regulate it. Okay, sorry. That I mean, that's been my understanding, but that could just be based on what people have told me their rights are. So I don't know if that's relevant or not. But um, I'm just not sure how I feel about us spending money with lawyers looking at people's tree branches hanging over. And then we have the situation where people, and maybe I'm pulling this out of proportion, but they're able, they're having to cut up trees or take out trees because it's overhanging their neighbor's property. I mean, in my neighborhood, you don't have a huge backyard. So if you could put one tree in the middle of the yard and 30 years later, it could be overhanging everybody's property. So um, that's just my feeling. But I mean, when you have a pool, stuff flies in it. That's just what happens and you have to clean it daily. That's just how it works. So that's my opinion. Councillor Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I agree. I don't, uh, I mean, I have a pool and my neighbor has trees that hang over my fence and I cut the branches that are over my fence uh, because I have trees in my front yard that blow into my neighbor's uh, yard. So um, are we gonna like, you know, tell everybody that they can't have like trees that are overgrowing now on their properties going forward? I mean, we have to like stop at some point. Um, I don't want to spend any money looking into uh, tree issues. Um, you know, it's if you have an issue with your neighbor, then maybe, yeah, you need to call. Um, you need to take care of that with your neighbor. Uh, I mean, normally when you buy a house, you see what sort of greeneries on the properties and stuff like that. So I, I can't see this really going any further. I think it's a waste of uh, Jason's time and taxpayers' money to look into this uh, through a legal avenue. That's just my opinion. Okay, Councillor Hanley. I'm dealing with it myself personally. It's a civil matter. It's between neighbors. And as Jason mentioned, I did do a little research, Carmen, as in regards to the Ontario Forestry Act. It makes an offense to injure or destroy a tree. And just a little insight on it, if I could, there, in regards to what they state in uh, one of their articles, is that if a branch from a tree hangs over the property line, this is through municipal law, or whatever, in such a way that causes injury or damage to the neighbor, the owner of the tree is legally responsible for the damage or injury. The same okay. principle applied to damage caused by tree roots. A homeowner may remove the overhanging branches of a tree belonging to their neighbor. In doing so, the homeowner may not enter the neighbor's land or trim branches without permission. However, if trimming the branches contributes to the death of the tree, the owner of the tree may be entitled to bring legal action against the neighbor that caused the injury. Again, the same principle applies to roots. If roots from a neighbor's tree cross property lines, the owner of the property being affected has the right to remove the roots. Only the roots they are actually crossing the property line may be removed, and they can't be removed in such a way that they may kill the tree. So I can go on, so I can tell you I'm dealing with it personally right now in regards to it and other matters, but in the same basis, so I already had a little bit uh, thing that deals with a tree canopy base, the boundary between property lines. And it's often that, as Jason mentioned, they call it a boundary tree. And then it becomes a dispute between two neighbors who uh, owns a tree. And boundary trees are instead are regulated under the Ontario Forest Act. So it makes an offense to injure or destroy a tree. So as I said, so myself, it's a, it's a civil matter. I don't want to go into it further, but I'm dealing with it personally right now. And I've been dealing with it since the day after our last election. Okay. So I can't see the city being involved and I wouldn't support us spend it, spending the money. I, you know, I'm telling you, I, I went that route, you know, and Jason, you know, I, I'm not going to speak to it, but uh, it, it's not something that the city wants to get themselves involved in. It's a, it's a dispute in the same way that when they put a swale in in a subdivision, 
once the city releases that uh, plan of subdivision agreement and signs it off, the neighbor fills in that sway and blocks the flow of water. It is no longer the city's responsibility. It's now becomes a civil matter. So in this case too, I look at it in the same context and that stuff from what I've known from experience is that it's something that's not waters the city wants to tread in. Okay, thank you, Councilor Hanley. Any further discussion on that? Okay, Councilor DeRose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Up next, I have casual labor hiring freezes, Councilor Hanley. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. You know, over the last while, we know that there's been a strain, especially on our outdoor workers, and in response to uh, not, us not having any students. And uh, later on in tonight, there's a report coming forward as possibly in regards to splash pads. And I know during uh, our budget deliberations, the council did pass a motion to hire several individuals, and I just didn't want to target one. Uh, sector, but I know in the operational departments and in the parks and cemeteries, you may be hurting. And what I want to do is if I could put a motion forward tonight and ask that our director of operations, Jeff Holman, come back with a report because I have talked to workers and, and staff and that stuff. And they are, you know, it's, it's a different ball game out there this year, as we know, uh, with 29 students, whatever, not being hired and a substantial amount of them were for the maintenance of our parks. And with us going into stage two, and, you know, possibly who knows what stage three is going to bring. Uh, I know the Thorough Baseball League, I think, is expecting to start uh, this weekend also. So I'm, I'm wanting a report to come back because as a council, we didn't, we made it that we wouldn't have a decision until June the 30th. Well, our next council meeting won't be until July the 7th or 8th or whatever it is. So it would be three weeks before we were ever to deal with it. Then we have to wait for two more weeks for the report to come forward. We wouldn't be getting that report to August. So I'd like a report from our director of operations in regards to the city fulfilling the commitment. We also have retirees recently that are retiring. We have a we have an individual that I believe is off because of parental leave. So we're 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 running thin here, and uh, we got a lot of parts to maintain. And if we open up splash pads, we can see the cost implications that are going to come. So. I want to put a motion forward. You know, I'd like to hire them right now and say that, but let's get a report forward. We had a group of individuals that we were looking to hire. I think we need to hire them. We've held off long enough. Uh, it's it's wearing on our employees that are out there that are doing sewer works or whatever. We're also in a vacation period now and that stuff. And if there was a time that we needed some extra hands on board, it's now. It's not later. It's now. Okay, so thank you, Councilor. Yeah, to that. but wait one sec. Uh, are, are we bringing a report to Council at the next meeting? Yeah, so the report's coming on the recovery plan, and on and this is, will this be addressed in that report? Yeah. So the report's coming to the next Council meeting, Councilor Hanley. Well, it would be nice that if someone like myself knew that such a report was coming forward and that stuff, and keep us in tune. You know, I know that we're busy, but. That's why I brought this up tonight because no one's informed me that some type of report like that's coming forward. Well, so I think if you read your email, the email said the recovery plan report would be coming in the first meeting in July. But so, nothing in really detail. So there's lots to be in regards to the recovery plan and that stuff. So I wanted to make sure that having uh, more employees on hand because, you know, we, we voted, if you remember last time, that we weren't going to do and we we're hiring until June the 30th. So we wouldn't be able to make that decision until the first council meeting in July. That was my concern. Uh -huh. I wanted to push it ahead. So if we're waiting till then, can a decision be made that night or we're going to have to have a, come, a report further after that and wouldn't be dealing with it until the last meeting in July. Would you know, Mr. Mayor, through you? I'll turn that over to our CAO and he'll speak on that. Manoj. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as you all know that council has approved four casual positions to be hired in 2020 and we know that we have currently we have four casuals that uh, with our public works and community services one of that casual has been into a permanent position there are two more retirements that what mayor has announced so those two casual positions will go into that so in, in all we are going to be at the end of july we will be short of seven positions the the positions that were uh, signed off by council was supposed to be hired on second quarter. So we were supposed to hire four casuals at, uh, at Jan uh, April 1st. Uh, but as you have seen uh, that every month we are providing a performer, we are providing staff report talking about staffing. 
So when you look at the, the staff report that was presented in, on April 21st, uh, CEO 2001, 20, uh, we basically outlined uh, that there are 23 seasonal positions, as Councillor Handley has pointed out, that we have not hired them. And also we have deferred 13 other positions, which I completely agreed, that had put a lot of strain on our staff. And certainly I will be the first one to admit that it has put a lot of uh, strain on our staff. The reason why that has been done, because there was a lot of pressure to mitigate the losses that has been incurred because of COVID-19. Uh, also, we have mentioned that because of the, we are not hiring these, or we are delaying hiring, or we're not hiring, that is going to uh, result in some of a level of service uh, issues with uh, in, in terms of grass cutting and all those things. So I certainly, uh, from our perspective, uh, we have been in touch with, I have been uh, in touch with our HR and also with our Director of Public Works and Community Services. We are in a process of now uh, hiring those schedules. It's going to take some time. Before we went on uh, to this pre-COVID, we have put an ad out in the newspaper. We were on a process of hiring, but then unfortunately this COVID happened. And when we said down as all senior staff, we consciously make decision that how we can able to mitigate the losses that uh, are upon us because of the revenue losses. And collectively, the decision was made that in some cases deferred hiring so that we could able to compensate. But certainly that has put on a lot of pressure on our staff. And, and I completely agree that we need to hire staff and then we are in the process of doing that. Uh, the July 7th, uh, as I said, April 21st, we have brought a report that has an entire performa that identified that we are delaying hiring from 1st of April to 1st uh, of August for those casual positions. Uh, and then number of other positions we have uh, postponed to hire them in Q4. What we will, and subsequently in, in May, we have brought another report, uh, which is uh, a finance report, DF 2020-13. And tonight you also have a report, DF 2020-16, uh, that basically attach the, as an appendices, the other two reports. So certainly from our perspective, I can see that from staff has put in a, you know, in a, a very strenuous position here, uh, and we are trying to make sure that we're going to provide quality service that our residents are, are uh, accustomed to and expect from us. However, we are also trying to mitigate uh, the losses and all those things. But what we'll do is we move forward, we will look into uh, how expeditiously we could uh, go and start, uh, you know, hiring these scheduled positions, the four that has been signed up by council uh, for this year, and also uh, based on the casuals who are moving into permanent positions and creating those positions. So that's that's what I can suggest that, uh, you know, councillors, uh, you know, rest assured, I am 100% concerned about that myself because that has put us in a very, very precarious position from staff perspective, a lot of workload on staff, Everyone, I can, I can say that in this forum, that every staff member of our team, whether it's union, non-union, because we don't discriminate between them, outside worker, inside worker, everybody has put in a lot of effort in moving the city forward during these unprecedented times. Thank you. Did you, uh, I had, uh, yeah. Councilor, go ahead, Councilor Han. I, I just wanted to point out, see, I, I brought it up because later tonight, we're going to be passing a motion possibly to open up our splash pads and that is dated to happen on July the 9th. So August the 1st doesn't do us any good because we need to do it tonight because if we, I know once we pass the bylaw on the 7th, but I, if I read it correctly here, we want to proceed with this on July the 9th. So we're going to have a meeting on the 7th and we're going to decide then. So then they, they're going to be all prepared and we're only going to give them 48 hours to know whether or not we're going to do it or we're not going to do it. So to me, I'm thinking that we need to put it in motion. So on the seventh, we know, we need to pass something in between. Maybe we need to have a special council meeting in between. That's why I'm looking at it, you know. Because if I read the report, we're going to do all this on July the ninth. If the pool is open on July the ninth and we haven't hired nobody, that's only going to put a bigger strain on us. Councilor so Hanley, we're going to we're we're gonna... deal with the pools and splash pads. And and if we and that's what in I'm this saying. Report. So if we pass that, if we pass that tonight, Mr. Mayor, that's dated July the 9th. So that doesn't help us for August the 1st. Well, that's my that, point. We're going to be short-staffed even more. That's a different uh, That's a different pool of workers. Go ahead uh, to the CAO. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, certainly the report that has come forward to Council at this point in time about pools and splash pad, uh, 
is this information report that is going out, we would request council to make a decision whether the pools in Splashford are going to be over, uh, are going to be open or not. Certainly, if we decide that yes, pools in Splashford are going to be over, there is a huge requirement as outlined in the report to hire staff. If that decision is made today, uh, that yes, we are opening one or the other or, or none, that will have implications on staffing as well. We will discuss that staffing uh, on, an, an, on a on a priority basis, and then we'll go for that. Uh, the, the, we are presenting this report in front of council, and based on what direction that we receive, certainly we would want to make sure that if we are opening at a particular date, we have staffing in place. Unfortunately, the plan was that we typically, and every year, as you know, we hire aquatic staff, especially for pools. This year, we are supposed to hire 19 aquatic staff early June. However, when we did, uh, and we have 19 individuals uh, uh, basically aligned for us that yes, they are going to be hired. However, considering the uncertainty that we were in, we have rescinded those offers to them and said that we, you know, we don't, we are not sure when we are going to open. So if they have alternative employment, they can seek that. So what we are going to do is if council so decide that yes, we are going to open splash pad or pools or both, we are going to reach out to those aquatic staff as well, along with of course the casual uh, workers that we are talking about to make sure that we have adequate staffing ahead of time because before we open up any facility. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Councillor Hanley, we'll be dealing with that as we go through the agenda. And then you can make further comment. Okay. Hello. Yeah, no, that's good. Yes. Councillor yeah. Kenny. And then I got Councillor Sentence. Yeah, I, I just find it very ironic that Councillor Hanley's worried about hiring. The last two meetings we've had, we, he's been asking for reports about not in people. the labor's union, Blue. If you'd listen to Excuse me, me. I speak. Hanley, I'm speaking. Councillor Kenny's got the floor. Go ahead, Councillor Kenny. The last two meetings, uh, some of the councillors have been talking about laying off. I think our staff is doing a great job. When, we, when you view the parks, when you view people, uh, residents that have called, I've had people call me, uh, uh, Big Red, Danny Timmons called me, said he called, he got great response for what he needed done. I think we have to stop micromanaging and let staff take care of things. If we're getting calls that things are not getting done because the staff isn't there, then we have to deal with it. But right now, the staff we have, they're doing a great job. And when we have to hire more people, I think our staff will get them on board and uh, make the right moves. I have full uh, support. Uh, I fully support what they're doing. Thank you. Councillor Sentence. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Um, yeah, I, I support the hiring. Uh, I know what stress are under. I know the main calls I get right now are are usually grass and parks. And then when I call, they're there within a day or two, but they, they, they can't trim, they can't do everything because they're understaffed. So I, I, I put it on our staff to hire, hire away. What, why do we need another report to hire? We have those four casuals that we approved earlier. We know we're short. Is there anything that we can do to speed up the process to get them the relief they need? And you're talking about, um, you know, there's there's regular sick days for people. There's regular people off. You're, you're talking about things that happen normally that stress that put stress on them even more and lessen their work staff. So uh, I'm for letting staff do their thing. And if they got to hire now, hire now because it's the biggest complaint for people is the parks and and uh, that sort of thing. So I'm all for it. Thank you. Councillor Decker. Go Thank ahead. you, Mr. Mayor. I agree. I don't think that we should wait. I think that we need to hire the staff now. Um, yes, I agree that we're short staffed in certain areas, but I think we need to hire the staff. We need to look at the aquatic staff because when our pool opens and our splash pads open, we need to have the staff ready to go. We can't wait until um, July 7th. We need to have everything ready to go now. 
So I agree. We have to. Um, they have to go ahead and 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 make this decision and hire the staff now because. Um, I'm just going to say now I'm for the pool opening. I think we have to like have some, you know, faith and, you know, give our residents something to look forward to. And we're going to need the staff. So I think that we need to just go ahead and do it. That report's coming and we can debate that report when it comes on the floor. Okay. So there is a report on the, on that. Go ahead. Councillor Neal. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I've been listening very intently on what we've been talking about. And there is a report coming along at the end of, or the first week of July, which will lay out the total package of who we should be hiring, not just staff as casual staff for cutting grass and that, but also throughout our system. And I know it's gonna be a good report. I'm sure it is. And, and I think staff has been working very diligently. And uh, maybe one thing we could do is hire the, the, the uh, casual staff for the parks in order to do the summer programs that are, are necessary uh, once the, uh, the uh, baseball gets going and the soccer gets going and, and all that sort of stuff. But I can remember a month and two months ago when uh, uh, our council were discussing and talking about uh, the Welland situation and them laying off all their staff and why haven't we done it yet? And uh, now we're talking about hiring staff and why haven't we done it yet? And I think staff all the way along has been trying to make sure that our city is is looked after in a, in a professional manner. And I, I, I can go along with hiring the casual staff that Councillor Hanley was talking about earlier. Uh, but let's wait and make sure that we hire all the staff in a, in a professional manner as we go along. And, uh, and that's my issue. And I'll talk about the pools a little bit later. Councillor DeRose. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. I, I missed about 10 minutes, Mr. Mayor. I'm having computer issues. I had to get out and come back. Can you just give me a recap of what everybody's talking about? I missed Manoj's whole, uh, speech or talking point sorry go ahead CNL. thank you mr mayor i just want to be very brief uh, just to give you a synopsis uh, we have presented three reports to council april may and one is coming to, to you tonight we have laid out how we are going to mitigate our losses some positions we have deferred hiring uh, but certainly uh, we understand that there's a lot of pressure on our staff uh, a need to hire. Uh, we were trying to make sure all the staff that we, whatever resources that we have, we are trying to move the city forward. What we are trying to do now is we have four positions that has been signed up by council in for 2020 for casual position. There are certain casual positions that we have. They are getting into permanent positions. There's a need to hire them. We are working with our HR, working with Director of Public Works and Community Services, making sure that how uh, in a reasonable amount of time we will hire those. We have already gone out uh, for that posting. We have received number of applications, it's just a matter of going, working out, uh, doing the interviews and, and, and uh, start hiring uh, some uh, positions. Because I would be the first one to admit that uh, because of our uh, uh, you know, delaying hiring because of our, uh, you know, not hiring some staff, it has put tremendous pressure on our staff and I compliment our staff that they have done tremendous amount of work uh, during these unprecedented times and going above, over and above and that has put certainly a lot of strain, strain on them as well. So uh, that's, that's what I have uh, mentioned in my uh, comments before Councillor DeRose. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Hanley. I just want to. I just want to say I'm not, my, not micromanagement. When I took an oath, that oath is under Section 224, is to represent the public and to consider the well-being and interests of the municipality, to develop and evaluate the policies and programs of the municipality, to determine which services the municipality provides, to ensure that administrative policy practices and procedures or controllership policy practices and procedures are in place to implement the decisions of council, 
and to ensure the accountability and transparency of the operations of the municipality, including the activities of the senior manager of the municipality. So, Councilor Kenny, you should read the Municipal Act. I'm not micromanagement. I have a right as a council to pose what I'm posing to council. I've been doing this for 20 years, and you need to read the Municipal Act. And don't question me in regards to that because I'm doing what I've been elected to do, and it's not micromanaging. I'm bringing motions forward. I'm trying to do it, and it had nothing to do. You want me to go further? Internally, I think that we needed to maybe do some layoffs, not on the outside. If you want to get into departments, I'll bring a motion forward in that stuff. Okay, well, regardless of what I said at the previous meeting and what I said at this meeting, people are allowed to voice their opinions either way, and for you to criticize me, it's like being a bully as far as I'm concerned. So that's my comments to you. I'm allowed to do that. Okay, that's Councillor Hanley, that's enough. End of it. Okay, I got Councillor Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, I won't, uh, I'll be brief. Um, I was agreeing with Councillor Hanley and Councillor Sentence that, yes, I know staff is working diligently and they are doing a great job and I appreciate that they are bringing these reports forward. However, I'm just saying I believe we need to hire the staff prior to that uh, because stage two has come fast and there's decisions that we need to make before our next council meeting. So I respect that the work that everyone's doing. I just agree that yes, we do need to do hiring. I just wanted to reiterate something that uh, Councillor Neal said. I don't remember ever saying that we needed to do what the city of Welland was doing. That would be something that I would never have agreed on, that we needed to lay off any of our staff. Um, I was totally against laying off our staff. So um, I don't ever recall that coming to council where we said that we wanted to be like the city of Welland. I just wanted to make uh, that very clear that that was not something um, that I would have ever um, voted on. Um, that's all I have to say, thank you. I have Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I I do too appreciate um, the package that they're putting together for us. I'm sure they're spending a lot of time on that, but I do have to agree that um, the, the, the outside staff uh, to manage our parks and cut our grass and do all that sort of stuff and pool if, if we vote to open that tonight and all that sort of stuff, I think waiting till our next council meeting is just too far away. And then we're going to have to act on that and complete interviews and onboard people and train them. And they're not going to be, you know, functional really until the beginning of August. And by then, you know, we're almost done. So that that doesn't make sense. So either maybe we need to separate that out of the um, the report that's coming to us. Maybe we need to have a special council meeting. I don't really care. Or maybe tonight we can just vote and say that staff has the authority to hire um the seasonal workers for the summer. I, I think it's necessary. And if we do open up the staff, I saw in the report, we need more staff members to do that, right? So why wait 20 some odd days for us to read it, meet up again and vote on it. And then for our, that's just putting more stress on our staff and uh, unrealistic timelines, I believe. So, so why don't we, um, once we get to that, let's get through the pools and the splash pads first. We can, uh, and then we can uh, move on from there because that's part of this discussion and it's the hugest part of this discussion when you're looking at Manning. So that's in the agenda. We are going to have that and then we can deal after if they want to move forward on the casuals because I think they're moving forward as it is. Staff has already moved on uh, getting ready to do interviews and everything. So, we have, like, there's issues in here, like the pa um, pool splash pads and outdoor patios. They're on the agenda. We got the, uh, those are on the agenda and should be dealt with when we hit those parts of the agenda. So that's what I'd like to do is move forward. Let's get through these points and let's get to those points and debate them when we get to them. That, and, and when we see something on the agenda, that is deals with an item then let's deal with it where we should be dealing with it okay councillor hanley i'm i'm another business and i had the floor i could put a motion on the floor right now that we hire six casuals and we vote on it right now i have the floor that was my intention was because there's nothing in this report that says about hiring casuals it, it just says about hiring staff for the pool and that stuff 
Go and, ahead. And, and, and it was just stated that that has nothing to do with regular employees. That's what you stated, Mr. Mayor, that that's not actual regular employees, that that's extra staff. So we need to vote on it. You stated that earlier, that that had nothing to do I'm with gonna that. I'm going to turn it over to the CAO. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We already have the authorization from council to hire those. What we have done is we are actually speaking. We have advertised for hiring casuals before we went to COVID. We have applicants in there. It's a matter of director, HR, and myself, we met. We are already in the process of uh, going through it. We are going to schedule interviews, and the first available opportunity, we will hire uh, casual workers. Thank you. Is that good, Councillor Hanley? Can I ask, when do we expect it? So then, see, we don't need that report then that's supposed to come forward and that stuff. If, well, if, if we're going to wait until July the 9th, we're going to act on it now. That's what gets me. It's confusing here, because read the report. We're going to act on it today or in July the 9th? So three, go ahead uh, to the CAO. Three, Mr. Mayor, there are two different things. The report that is going to come on July 7th is to tell council about the various stages of opening uh, the recovery plan. Uh, it will also uh, show that what kind of extra expenses that we have to incur in terms of dealing with post-pandemic, that is different. Uh, the hiring of casuals, hiring of other staff, we have laid it out in our reports previously, how we are deferring some positions. We understand that the amount of strain that our uh, public works and community services folks are in. So what we have already started the process of hiring casuals. So uh, that, that part is already in process. It's just a matter of scheduling the interviews now through Zoom. Uh, unfortunately, we can't have one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of. Uh, so our public works, community services managers, our director, they're all involved in it. Uh, HR has already been notified. We are already going ahead and, and interviewing those guys. And then just a matter of selecting them, it's going to take some time because if they have to come, uh, if they are already uh, working somewhere, they have to provide us notice and all those things. But that process is already in, I, I, ongoing, actually. Thank you. Okay, so, because in April when we passed that motion, that was that we were having a hiring freeze until June the 20th, if I read it right. Okay, uh, so so that's why now we're here at June the 16th. So, I mean, June the 30th. So we already passed a bylaw that we're going to have a freeze until the 30th. So do not we not have to pass a motion or put a motion forward to go beyond June 30th? Um, I'll turn it over to CAO, but I think the process won't be uh, completed before yeah. June 30th. So, so, so through you, Mr. Mayor, we have never said there is a hiring freeze. What we have said is that this is what we are trying to do to mitigate losses. We have never said that we have, you know, we have the approval of council. We didn't and, hire uh, people, so we didn't, that was, okay, sorry. That's right, so there was no hiring freeze. So the thing is, think about it, councillor. I would be the first one when we came about with the budget deliberation. I was the first one to say that we need 15 more uh, staff this year. I came with that request. We, we debated at council. We have discussed it internally with our senior staff. The only positions, including casuals, whatever was absolutely essential, we came forward. So look at it from my perspective. If I were to hire, I would hire all those people today. And the reason what we are sort of deferring it because of uh, how the, uh, the revenue uh, losses and, and how we are mitigating. But, but we know that we are under a lot of pressure with our staff. I, ha I am in constant touch with our union executives as well, uh, uh, councillors. So I am very well aware of it. We have daily meetings with our senior staff, so everybody is aware of it, what is going on. Uh, I, I'm in constant touch with our director of public works and community services, various managers, Curtis, Sean, Steve, all of them. So I'm very well aware of the situation. And as I said, knowing that, that our staff is under a lot of pressure, we have already, st already started the process ongoing on that. And I'm not talking about pools and, and, and splash, but that is a separate issue altogether. But for casuals, we will we have already started that process thank you okay so the process is ongoing okay thank you and the other issues uh, are you fine to deal with them as the reports come forward okay are you fine with that yes okay thank you councillor hanley go ahead councillor kenny yeah i just want to make sure that i understood what uh, manoj just said so what you're saying is we are going to hire um, the casuals that are needed um, before we would hire any students. Is that right? No. 
Through you, Mr. Mayor. We are also waiting from the federal government to, to mention, uh, to, to, uh, we have not heard as, as yet that if they have a student program, if we have students that we are being offered uh, no cost to the city, we are certainly going to explore that and hire that as well. Uh, so we are, it's a multi-pronged approach. And if I get from uh, the managers or director of public works and community services that we need to hire more, we'll hire more. So the, 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 our responsibility is also to make sure that we are providing a good level of service that what we are offering to our community. And, and we have tried uh, with the limited resources that we have in order to do that. Now my understanding, speaking with the, our managers and directors, it is putting a lot of strain. And some of the stuff, we, if we have, it may have to have a multi, multiple, multiple uh, prong approach, and, and we may have to hire, uh, you know, staff casuals, and also students if there is a need for it. Thank you. Answer, Kenny, because what happens is there's certain positions like as we go through this report, if we need people at the pools and uh, lifeguards and that. They'll be hired. That's got nothing to do with the casual positions, okay? They're different, uh, different types of job, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna move on. Anything else? Anyone, anything else? Okay, we're gonna move on to uh, consent reports. We have one, two, three, five consent reports. Does anyone wanna pull a consent report or are we taking them, as all, or taking them all together? Anyone want a pull-up consent report? Councilor Neal. Consent report PWCS 31, the sidewalk contract. Okay, anyone else? Okay, so we're gonna take DF 2020-17, DF 2020-19, PWCS 2020-29, and PDS 2020-30. I have a mover, Councillor Neal, and a seconder, Councillor Longo. All those in favor? Opposed, carried. So now we have one left, and that is PWCS 2020-31, 2020 Sidewalk and Curb Replacement Program contact, Contract Award and Inspection Services, and Councillor Neal, you asked to pull this report, so I'll open the floor to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, on the sidewalk contract, in in do, uh, putting the contract together, and 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 we we put it in there is that there is a section in there that states that we are going to do it for 2021 also to the same company, and my. My question and comment is, should we be doing that or should we be sending it out for tender for next year? I'll turn that over to our uh, Director of Public Works and Community Services, Jeff Holman. Jeff. Yes, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what we've done to try and uh, make things easier to, uh, <clears throat> on the procurement side, is to uh, tender a multi-year contract. Uh, if we're satisfied with the performance uh, in the first year, then we would look to extend the contract to the second year uh, using the same unit prices. The advantage is, is, to, uh, is that we would uh, avoid having to go back out to tender again, and then we can adjust the amount based on the approved budget. Okay, Councilor you, Neal, go ahead. I just wanted to make sure that staff is comfortable in doing that, and that next year all of a sudden we come along and... and contract could be 150,000 instead of 161,000. That's my own, you know, issue with it. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, so one of the advantages of uh, having a contractor on uh, is that uh, we can control the amount of work that we give to them. Uh, if there is additional work that needs to be done and we have resources, we can complete it ourselves. Typically, we'll do the smaller jobs that require you know, uh, kind of uh, piecework, as opposed to those uh, longer sections. Um, and those are the, the ones that we would normally assign to the uh, contractor. But uh, in every case, we would have complete control over what work gets done and how much money gets spent uh, through the annual budget process. Thank you very much. Are you good with that, Councillor Neal? Yes, I'm good with it. Anyone else that wants to speak to that? 
Okay, seeing none, I got to again move her Councillor Neal, second her Councillor Longo, PWCS 2020 31. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we move on to discussion reports. Up first is DF 2020 16. I got a mover, Councillor DeRose, a seconder, Councillor Wilson. It's a COVID. Um, Update three, and I'll turn this over to our Director of Finance, Maria Morrow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recommendations are that the report be received for information purposes, that the penalty and interest waiver not be extended beyond the original June 30th date for all taxpayers, and that a subsequent report be prepared, which incorporates post-pandemic recovery plan and costs, and any other COVID related financial expenses. And this concludes the report. Thank you. Are there uh, any questions on the report? Seeing none, I guess you did a thorough job, uh, Maria. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. PWCS. 2020-34, I have a mover, Councillor Sentence, a seconder, Councillor Neal, St. David's Road Reconstruction Project, Highway 406 to Collier Road, cost-sharing agreement with the Niagara Region, and I'll turn this over to our Director of Public Works and Community Services, Jeff Holman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recommendation is one, the council approve the terms of a cost sharing agreement with the Niagara region for its share of the St. David's Road reconstruction project. It's highway 406 to Collier Road. And two, that funding in the amount of 1,015,000, oh, sorry, 15,423 dollars be pre-approved from the 2020 capital budget from the annual roads renewal provision to fund part of the roads portion of the city's share. Three, that funding in the amount of 120,000 be approved or already approved in the 2020 capital budget for the St. David's Road Reconstruction Project, Collier to Front, be reallocated to fund part of the roads portion of the city's share. And four, that the council direct staff to withdraw its application for funding under the Niagara Region's Public Realm Investment Program. And five, that the mayor and clerk be authorized to sign and execute the necessary agreements. Okay, so that's the report. Um, the floor is open now for questions to our Director of Public Works and Community Services. I got Councillor Hanley. Okay, the only reason that was withdrawing the application under the funding is because prior to us putting that application in, they weren't a partner, right? Now they are? Um, Mr. Mayor, that's the uh, the public realm uh, application? So, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, what, um, we made the application with the hope they would be able to help us fund our portion of the cost uh, associated with the trail. And what they've uh, determined is that uh, they would fund uh, items like bus shelters, uh, benches, uh, and those type of uh, public amenities, which are good in and of itself. However, a project of this size and scope that's going to have that much impact on our budget next year uh, we didn't think it's appropriate for us to commit an additional twenty-five or twenty-six thousand uh, dollars to put those amenities in at this time. We can always okay. reapply at some point in the future, but I yep. think it would be a little bit um, um, out of line to ask for that money again this year. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. I have Councillor Neal, and then I got Councillor Longo. Councillor Neal first. Just a quick question, is the city of St. Catharines is that we shouldn't have a separate agreement or is it all through the region? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Is it a separate agreement or is it with the, through the region? Yes, yeah, so uh, thanks, uh, Councillor Neal. The um, uh, city of St. Catharines will be entering into a similar agreement for their share of the cost. Uh, I think you can see on, in the report on the attachment, it shows what their portion is. It's uh, much higher than our share, but um, uh, so there will be a, a separate agreement between the region and St. Catharines uh, um, for their portion, which includes things like water mains and, and their side of the road, effectively. Thank you. Okay, I got Councillor Longo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the Director of Finance. I'm just wondering if um, 
it's pretty substantial price tag here. If you could tell me or council um, how this will affect, affect next year's budget. Uh, uh, certainly three, Mr. Mayor. We, uh, we have a provision that we set aside for roads projects every year. Uh, in 2020, that amount was 1,063,000. So certainly uh, that will, um, you know, impact on the, the number of projects that can be done for next year. This will be the major project. Uh, the funding is there uh, because what we'll do is we'll take that normal provision and instead of uh, allocating it to a number of different roads projects, it, it will go to this one. So in terms of the, the budget impact, um, on the basis that uh, there are no other roads projects that will be advanced. Uh, you know, we will have, have a little bit of money in uh, about 500,000 in federal gas tax, about 573 in federal gas tax. I think there's about 470,000 in OSIF money uh, that would uh, provide some additional funding for additional infrastructure projects. But uh, that being said, uh, we don't expect that there should be uh, an impact to the budget because we will use that million sixty three to fund this project. Great. And uh, one more question to the director of finance, if I may. Um, I know on Front Street, we reallocated some gas tax funds from St. David's Road. Was it this project? Um, I don't. I thought it was further down, but I, I, I'll have to get back to you. I'm sorry, I don't recall which one it was. I think okay. that if my my uh, if recall correctly, it was the other end uh, from uh, from Collier Road to uh, Front Street. Okay, and then I guess my final question then, Mr. Mayor, to the appropriate staff member. Um, I know people are gonna um, realize that this part of St. David's is getting done. Can we have an update or a time frame on when the uh, severely deteriorated part of St. David's will get repaired? <laughs> Between Town Line and, uh, I guess, uh, Front Street? Um, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, the section between Collier and Front uh, is still, uh, has to, we have to complete the environmental assessment process. Uh, and although we've identified some preferred alternatives, we're still uh, struggling with the uh, method of communicating with the public, uh, with the new um, uh, restrictions on public meetings. Um, regardless, we hope to finish that section up. It doesn't look like we'll be able to get to the design phase of that project, and that's why we're reallocating $120,000 that were, was already in our budget for this. Uh, to go back to the other portion um, that the region is building. Um, so the, the timeline now <laughs> looks as though uh, that we'll need another year to complete the EA and the detailed design. Uh, the scope of that project is going to be probably upwards of four or five million dollars, uh, which will be shared with the city of St. Catharines. So we have to align our budget schedule with theirs. Uh, so realistically, I think we're looking at 2022 or maybe even into 2023 by the time we're finished. Okay. And, and just one final question. I know I said that already, but um, the final um, look of this project, will it look very similar to the work the MTO has done? And by that, I mean the uh, um, <clears throat> active transportation, uh, bike lanes, walking path. Will that be continued all the way from the 406 to Collier Road in some fashion? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, uh, the design is calling for the extension of a multi-purpose trail on the south side of St. David's Road, the Thorold side, uh, at least until it gets to the point where it splits off into Town Line Road and St. <coughs> David's Road East. There's some property acquisitions, some uh, improvements to that intersection that are required, and then We'll, uh, we'll look at extending uh, uh, shared uh, cycle lanes uh, on both of those legs as they, uh, as they Y off to make sure that there's uh, um, alternate access and um, uh, satisfy uh, requirements and in the input that we're getting from our uh, active transportation committee. Great, but, but this, this leg here from the 406 to call your will definitely have it. That's for sure, yes. 
Okay, thank you. And then I had, uh, our, Maria, did you have your hand up? So, yep, go ahead. Uh, yes, Mr. You, Mr. Mayor, in response to Councillor Longo's earlier question, uh, the portion of St. David that was uh, coming from federal gas tax that was reallocated was uh, from Collier to Front Street. So it was not this portion of the project. Okay, any further questions? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Um, PWCS 2020-35, Mover Councilor Kenny, Seconder Councilor Decker, DQ Road and Cataract Road parking restrictions. Um, and again, I'll turn this over to our Director of uh, Public Works and Community Services. Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The recommendation is that on-street parking be prohibited on both sides of Cataract Road from DeQ Road to Wiley Road and from DeQ Road to Cataract Road to, uh, to a point 300 meter east of Faywell Road. And secondly, that the traffic and parking bylaw number 150-2012 scheduled B be amended to reflect the proposed parking restrictions. Okay. Speakers or questions or speakers, go ahead, Councillor Kenny. Yes, can, can I uh, make a, a friendly amend, uh, add to this? Um, and I'll make, explain something. The council directed CAO to work with the City of St. Catharines on further mitigation me measures related to the health and safety of the residents of Thorold. And this be enforced until the province of Ontario is in stage three of the COVID crisis. I'm, I'm adding this because I, was, I spent a lot of time out there this weekend and uh, not, a, not in the park, but in the area. And um, I talked to a lot of people. They're from Toronto, Brampton, Dunville, Cayuga, everywhere in Ontario. And the problem is that uh, um, they're coming from all over Ontario. So I'm saying until the province gets in stage three, what they're telling me is this is a hot, it's on the internet. This is a great place to be. I saw two guys carry a cooler that was as big as a coffin. No exaggeration. I think I sent a picture to a lot of uh, the counselors. Um, I think we need this. One of the things I would like to see is we have bylaw officer there. St. Catharines has a bylaw officer there. I would like to see um, communication between the cities. So it, if it's across the line, St. Catharines can still ticket. Thorough can still ticket in St. Catharines. We can use their uh, resources and um, uh, somehow in discussions, pool the money together or whatever. But we, we have to stop what's going on. And I think this uh, amendment further to the two that have already been there would help us. Thank you. I'm just going to get the CAO to comment on that. Go ahead, uh, Manoj. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we are already in touch with St. Catharines. I, in fact, uh, this afternoon, I had a chance to speak with the deputy CEO as well, just to see that collectively how we can able to uh, correct this problem, because we know that number of uh, people who are utilizing it, they're coming from Toronto and, and far away. Uh, and that is putting a lot of pressure on us, uh, both from safety perspective and also from enforcement perspective. So between us and St. Catharines, we are trying to uh, find out some mitigation measures, how to correct this problem. Uh, I agree that uh, until such time, the beaches are open, uh, Toronto and uh, that area is open for stage two. We may have to suffer this problem, so we are trying to find out how to, to uh, mitigate this and also what we are doing is we are going to enforce our bylaw uh, on Sundays as well. Uh, as you know that we are doing six day bylaw coverage, but for this Sunday, certainly we will have a bylaw coverage to make sure that uh, we are going to address it. But uh, as I said, we are in touch with St. Catharines and our working uh, solution along with them collectively so that uh, we are working jointly. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna let Jason, did you wanna speak on that at all? No? Okay. I can just say I've been in many discussions with Mayor Sensick from St. Catharines, 
and we've been working together and they've got some things they're looking at uh, making some changes there that should improve the situation. Um, uh, it's, uh, but I can tell you that um, it's a very complicated situation because a Morningstar Mill is in St. Catharines. Once you go up the hill, that's provincial lands. Um, and um, so, uh, and we in the city of Thorold get the follow because there's not enough parking. So they're parking and it's, most of the parking's occurring along roads that are in the city of Thorold. And that's why this bylaws come in front of council tonight. But we're working together closely with the city of St. Catharines on this. Um, so, Councillor Kenny, are you okay with um, uh, that Minoj is working with them and they're working on some uh, issues? Or are you, do you still want to add something here? Um, as far as I brought up, like about the tickets and stuff like that, um, I, I don't. Can we do that without having discussions and getting an agreement that St. Catharines would ticket in in Thorold if their guy was there and our guy wasn't? Like we don't have a guy on Sunday. I, I know Jason's talked about maybe getting somebody there on Sundays, but Sunday is a, a day that we do need somebody there. Um, just have some uh, civil discussions, and that's all this is saying that. Uh, uh, for the health and safety of the people. We had a, uh, a fire truck there that couldn't get through. They had to call the police department to get cars cleared out of the way so that the fire department could get there. That's how bad it was. I know, I Nobody agree. Could and through. I know today that our bylaw had, a, had was towing cars there today. So, uh, Jason, do you want to add? Because you know what your, your, your bylaw crew's going through there. Do you want to speak on that? and? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, I agree. It is a challenging situation. Um, we are trying to uh, maintain regular coverage for that area on a regular basis now, uh, knowing the issues that are arising. Um, as Minoj had identified, he has been in touch with the uh, deputy CAO for the city of St. Catharines and I will be reaching out to their bylaw enforcement staff as well. Um, I'm certainly happy to have those discussions as to the logistics of cross-border enforcement. Um, I'm not sure how that will work, but uh, we can certainly have those discussions and, and see what we can come up with. Okay, so they're gonna do that. Are you okay with that, Councillor Kenny? And then we'll deal with the bylaw and staff will, uh, is working on that end. Are you good with that? Councillor Kenny. Okay, I just thought that to get to get it done properly, we the, they'd have to be directed by the council. But if they can do it without that, no, then they're, uh, they're they're fine. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion, Councillor Longo, and then Councillor hey, Neal. Uh, to the appropriate staff staff member, if we pass this, how fast will no parking signs go up? Go ahead, Jeff. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, the signs are in stock. We've ordered the locates for the sign locations. We're just waiting for the decision tonight. We may have them, we'll have most of them up by the weekend. By yeah, the do weekend. We know the oh. Do we, we know the budget implication cost? Uh, Mr. Mayor, the cost of the signs will be in the neighborhood of $2,000, which uh, can be accommodated in our operations budget. Okay, great, thank you. Councilor Neal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, because on the weekend, I was out there a few times myself, and they were parking in between the barriers that we put up. I know, you're right. Uh, and uh, I, I think the police department should be out there more often than maybe what they are, too, to help out the bylaw officers. And the third thing I'll just comment on is that uh, the Lake Gibson Conservation Committee is working on putting a pathway through on the south side of that roadway. And we were in preliminary discussions with the region uh, because the park that's on the other side of the road right there is a, re is a regional uh, park is to put more parking in there, at least to get some of those cars off of, off of the roadway. So maybe a further discussion regarding that particular park and whether we could put some more parking uh, in that area might be worthwhile doing in the, for the long term. 
Okay, anyone else? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Okay, D. PWCS 2020-38, I have a mover, Councillor Longo, and a seconder, Councillor DeRose. Richmond Street's pool and municipal splash pads for the 2020 season. Options for operation, and I'll turn this over to our Director of Public Works and Community Services, Jeff Holman. Sorry, the recommendation is that Council uh, provide staff direction on the preferred option for the Richmond Street Pool and or municipal splash pads from the options presented in this report. Okay, so it's a pretty detailed report. I'm sure there's going to be uh, much discussion. Let's open the floor and who's up first? Go ahead, Councillor Wilson. I'll just say that um, I believe we should open both. Obviously, reading the report, it doesn't look like an easy task. Um, but I think that our citizens, as uh, Councillor Decker said earlier, they need something to look forward to. We need to have a sense of community in a safe way. And I think by, you know, if, if Councillor was to choose keeping this closed, it would impact people that are in... Um, my children found me. I'm sorry. It would, it, would, it would impact, you know, people that are in this situation where um, they don't have amenities like that in their home, right? Or they're maybe on lower incomes or in situations of um, being at risk and having these places to cool down and these areas where they can escape and go to safely. I think is very important in our community. So I know there's a cost implication and it's going to be challenging for our staff to um, put together, but I think um, I think our city needs this and I'm, I'm for that. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Councillor DeRose, and then I have Councillor Decker after that. Through you, Mr. Mayor, can you hear me? Because I'm on the phone now. Yeah, I can hear you real good okay. now. <laughs> thank, thank you. I, I won't talk as loud as I usually do. Um, I, I totally disagree. I, I, I'm for option four. I think it's a safety issue. I am very concerned about our, our, child's, our children's safety. I've got a four, five, six-year-old. We go to the splash pads every day in the summer. This summer, we will not. Um, I, I understand it's going to be hard on people. Uh, anytime you take away recreation, it's not a good thing. But I think uh, lives and health are more important at this point. And can I just put a question to staff? If If... I, I'm not in favor of it, but if, if council did decide their wishes were to open pools and splash pads, um, what would the opening date be if staff can uh, supply us with that? Because I know there has to be a lot of preparation, uh, staff hiring, and, and a lot of organization. So can I put that question to staff, please? Yes, I'll get Jeff to answer that. Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, with your permission, could I defer to uh, Curtis Dre, who's been working with the, uh, his colleagues on uh, best practices? Is he here? Is he on? Oh, okay. I'll turn that to Curtis. I didn't know you were on, Curtis. Good evening. Uh, yeah, three years. Hi, Mr. Curtis. So, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So, um, the latest developments are as such. So, the pool, we were hoping to be able to open in a couple of weeks. Um, there's been a delay on the construction material to complete the repair. So, we would be looking at the end of July as an opening date for the pool to complete the repairs. Um, again, factories have been shut down. Uh, it's sort of the same story we've heard before, that production of the paint material, the epoxies, the, the materials that they need have caused delays. So uh, unfortunately, the pool would be the end of July. Uh, the splash pads, uh, once the hiring's done, uh, I'm going to say two weeks. Um, the intention would be likely to try to uh, utilize many of the staff that offers we're currently out to already uh, and pick most of those students up that we could, the students and the lifeguards, to get the staffing levels where we needed them to be. So two weeks. Okay. Um, uh, another question, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor Doros. You're still up. Uh, to, to, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to, to Curtis, um, how, how would we enforce uh, social distancing at splash pads? Um, and pools for that matter. 
Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that is going to be a challenge in itself. We're aware of that one. Um, and this is part of the, the question that we wanted to put to council is, uh, we anticipate a lot of pushback. We anticipate angry residents um, because the process would be uh, basically an online booking type portal where you'd have to book a time frame to show up uh, and attend the splash pads. And then we would have two people or students at each splash pad facility maintaining access and doing cleaning, intermittent cleaning as they went. Uh, so we basically try to keep people six feet apart, probably approximately 10 people at a time. Uh, again, you know, short terms or short time frames of people coming, coming in and then leaving and we'd have to clean. So it'll be, it'll be a, uh, a process, I will say that, and uh, but we're prepared to take it on if that's what council would like. Okay, I have yeah. Councillor Decker. Mr. Mayor. Oh, oh. you're not done. I, 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 one more question, Mr. Yeah. Mayor, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. I uh, just wanted to make a comment also. Um, Sink, I, I, I was in contact with uh, uh, Gene Citrigno, president of Thorold Soccer. They're meeting tonight. Uh, he doesn't want me to say anything, but I don't think they're gonna have minor, so this is my opinion. Uh, he'll come up with an official statement tomorrow, but I honestly don't think they'll be having minor soccer in Thorold this summer. St. Catharines has canceled their uh, minor baseball and lacrosse. So I, I think we have to be cautious here. Uh, we, we've suffered, and, but it, it'll be to no avail if, if, if we allow uh, opening too soon. And, and I think uh, the safety issue of the pools is, is of utmost importance. So I, I'm in favor of option four. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor DeRose. I had Councillor Decker. Were you up next, Councillor Decker? Yep, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Obviously, you know where I stand with the pool issue. I agree with uh, Councillor Wilson uh, for option um, three, I believe it is, to open both the pools and the splash pads. I understand that it's going to be a challenge uh, for everyone. Um, but we, we are and have to start reopening um, our city and um, I'm not being um, insensitive. Um, I think that, you know, that the pools and the splash pads need to open for health and safety reasons. Um, should we experience heat waves, uh, heat advisories, which we know that we're going to, uh, people need a, a way to cool off and minimize their health risks. and. Um, you know, not everybody has the amenities that other people have. And I think it's, you know, we need to offer them, you know, a public service in our city. And obviously we'd have to follow the COVID-19 regulations uh, that are in place. Um, I just think that we need to give people something to look forward to. I get it. Um, some people are still afraid. I totally respect and understand that. Um, I think that um, at some point we have to be able to go out and live our life. We can't like stay hidden in our houses forever. I mean, you know, it's unfortunate that this happened and, you know, it affected so, so many people. I, but I truly believe that we have to, you know, start um, having some normalcy, you know, in our lives and in our city. And I think that this would be, you know, a way to, you know, give people like a hope uh, to look forward to. So I, I, I think that we should um, open both. And I know it's going to be a struggle for everybody, but we have to work together to try to make it work. Thank you, Councillor Decker. I got Councillor Sentence. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I got you, uh, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I, I agree with all the sentiments of uh, Councillor Decker and Wilson uh, about wanting to open it. Uh, Lord knows I say, you know, what what services and what amenities you get for your taxes. Um, I, I just, I can't see opening these ones this year. Um, if we're not opening a pool till July, the end of July for a month, um, because it closes when whatever school comes at, at the end of, uh, end of July, start of August. Um, other centers I know I have closed, and I think maybe Curtis can talk about this too, is St. Catharines isn't opening theirs. Uh, I don't think Welland is opening theirs. Uh, a couple are talking about doing it, but uh, a point, as I was talking with uh, uh, Regional Councillor Whalen today, and a couple of points he made is, you know, 
that they were talking about at their public uh, safety uh, meeting today. If you have uh, all these pools and centers that are closed, you're going to have people trying to come to our pools and they're not going to come to the nice pools or whatever center is open. And they also said that, you know, you know um, they want to, as a region, for everybody to do the same thing so that that doesn't happen, so that people aren't trying to go from town to town and pool to pool, and safety is uh, uh, the utmost importance. Um, you can only put limited people in anyways right now. You got to do it by appointments. We're putting, you know, a teenager's uh, attendance possibly in harm's way if people don't say, well, I'm going in anyways. Um, and, and the other part that I would say is that, that I would suggest is putting, opening, making sure that we have the ability to open up our cooling centers so that people can go in there. And I think it'd be easier to space, to stay socially distanced. And if you have those 90 degree days that they would have something to somewhere and some place to go to. I, I just don't think it's safe to do it right now. And the time frame is so short. Uh, I would love to, but honestly, I, I, I don't think we should be opening it. Thank you. Councillor Hanley. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, myself, I'm actually in favor of option two. Uh, we have six splash pads in the city of Thorold and uh, Sullivan. Confederation South, Richmond Street, McMillan, Port Robinson, Thorold South. I'm not for opening the pool, but I'll open the splash pads. And I do that because London, Ontario has announced on Friday they're going to be opening up the splash pads, but no pool. In Stratford, they've announced that they will be opening up splash pads, but no pool. Niagara Falls on Saturday will open up seven splash pads, but no pool. New Market is opening up splash pads, but no pool. Uh, Kitchener's in the process of doing it. Ottawa's uh, already in next week. They're going to be opening up, and most of them are opening up splash pads, but no pools. And I'm looking at not opening up the pool since it won't be ready until the end of July. And if we look at the figures, if we were to, uh, we already approved the budget of $265,990. So if we close the pool, we save all the monies in the list as the approved budget other than... Uh, we'd have to excuse the revenue of 45,032 and anything I don't see the contract in there for the repairs, it's just small tools. So I'm looking at that would be a saving to operate the splash pads would be 245,000. So we're actually $20,000 ahead at the end of the day. And I'm looking at the people have been locked up long enough. COVID-19 isn't going anywhere until we find a vaccine for it. So if there's no vaccine for it next year, we're gonna be in the same boat because it's gonna be transmitted. It's not gonna go anywhere. Look at New Zealand was free of COVID. They got it there again because some tourists come from the UK for a wedding. So there's no stopping it. It's being transmitted worldwide and it's gonna continue until we can find a vaccine. It can only be controlled. How long are you gonna control it and how long are you gonna keep people tied up? I believe for mentally, for uh, that's an issue and that stuff for people. They're getting what they call cabin fever, being locked inside the house. It's stressful on families. There's a rise in abuse and households to children, to, to women. It, it, it's, it can go on and on. And we need to give some people some type of relief. And not all people are able to have pools in their backyard or have the ability to afford transportation, especially now when I know families in Confederation Heights, two parents, both of them sitting at home, four kids. On Kiefer, where Councillor Wilson lives, I know two families there that are unemployed between the two of them, have seven kids. They need some type of relief, you know, and going out to the splash pads, I know there's safety concerns uh, about it, but there's places in place. It's obviously that these other municipalities, Toronto's got the green, as soon as they get the green light, they're ready to go. But I'm looking at the fact, just do a little research. Most municipalities are opening up their splash pads, but they're not opening up their pools. Newmarket, Ottawa, Stratford, Niagara Falls, Newmarket, as I mentioned. Niagara and Lake is too. I know they're opening up, but I was unable to get the information whether or not it was just splash pads or pools, but I know they're opening up too. So I believe we owe it to the taxpayers. They've been locked up long enough. They need some type of relief, and, and that's a relief. We got thousands of children in this municipality, and if what Councillor DeRose says there'll be no soccer, 
there be no baseball possibly and no recreational sports. We need to supply something to our residents. And I think they're deserving of it, especially being in their households like we have here since March the 12th. So I'm for option two, uh, opening up all the splash pads, but not opening up the pool. And it would be revenue neutral as far as I see from the numbers before me. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kenny. I'm uh, for option four for the reasons that, uh, Niagara, as far as I know, Niagara Falls and Lincoln are the only places that are gonna open their pools. Um, similar to the DQ situation, um, if we do open our pools, we're gonna have people from all over the district coming to our pools, that's gonna be another issue. Um, um, if we do open our splash pads, we got six splash pads, that's good for 60 people, 10 people right now per splash pad. Um, we're gonna have adults showing up with their children and yelling at the students and, and, and kids that are working and arguing that their kids are gonna go in there. That's gonna be another issue. Um, and you know what? The liabilities with this COVID, it's changing every week or maybe every day. Nobody really knows if it can be transmitted through water. Um, down the road, it might be told to us that it can be transmitted through water. And I think it's a dangerous situation. We've come this far. We can't open them for six weeks. Um, I do agree with Councillor Sentence that we have to come up with some cooling centers for people in Thorodo. Um, we, uh, we have to give them a place to go if it's too hot, definitely. I, uh, so the cooling centers part, I do agree with. But as far as opening the pools that we can't open for six weeks, I think it's just, it's a health and safety issue. It's dangerous. And to open them up for six splash pads for 60 people going online, it's going to create a whole lot of other problems. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Uh, anyone else? I got Councillor Wilson. I got Councillor Wilson and then Councillor Neal. Sorry about that. Go ahead. And then Councillor Longo. Go ahead, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I I don't see really honestly the difference between a cooling station and a splash pad. So the water isn't recycled, it's fresh water. So even if it was transmitted through water, which has never been stated that it is, it's going down the drain, it's going to be monitored. So the kids shouldn't be you know, touching each other, I guess, in this splash pad as well. And I really don't think that parents are gonna be yelling at teenagers that are, are running it. I mean, I think what I have witnessed in our community is people being very caring and actually extra caring through all of this and, and patient. I mean, that's been my, what I've noticed when I'm out, you know, buying groceries or or whatever the case is. So um, I don't, I, I think those are frivolous concerns. I, I think that, um, you know, parents yell at the teenagers probably at the pool, at the public pool because their kid is in whatever. So I don't think that's something that should stop us from opening a splash pad. Um, you know, the pool isn't going to be ready to August. That's obviously new information. So maybe that's something we can discuss. But I think at the very least, splash pads need to be opened. They're going to be sanitized. You read in the report, they're going to have only so many kids in there at once. We're going to do our due diligence. Um, and then it's up to parents to let their kids go or not. So if you as a parent aren't comfortable with your kids going to the splash pad, you don't let them go. If you don't have concerns about that, um, then you let them go. I mean, we, we don't have um, a lot of cases. The, the province is saying we can open these things. Um, you know, you, they've got all that information readily available to them. Our role is to make sure we open it safely, which our staff has put a plan together here. So I don't think it's... The, it should be a debate of whether we should open it because people might get COVID. The province is saying that we're at the point that it's safe to open it, just do so responsibly. That's what this discussion should be. So we have responsible options. That's what we base our decision on. Not We're not being the province and saying we're closing down our city here. We're deciding whether this is a responsible solution to opening, which they said we can and should be doing. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. I got Councillor Neal. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I agree the pool is a non-issue now. Uh, it only being open a month and it's harder to control uh, more kids than less kids. I believe the splash pads, we can control the splash pads. Uh, I would just hope that whoever we hire, the, the students that we hire 
are more senior in nature so that they can control uh, the parents and, and the kids going in and out of the splash pads. Uh, but I agree that no, option number two would be a good thing uh, and would help our community get through the, the summertime. Thank you, Councillor Neal. I have Councillor Longo. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, have, I have a real issue opening the pool uh, considering the short time span um, and the amount of money it would cost for that short time span around $250,000 in around that range. Um, some other issues, uh, being the father of a lifeguard, not, not who works in Thorold, but uh, we're getting a lot of emails and uh, there could be liability concerns in the swimming pool for sure. Um, because God forbid somebody needs to be saved. Um, the only recommended way to save somebody is through, through compression, not through mouth to mouth obviously because of COVID. So do we wanna put ourselves in that liability standpoint? My concern with the splash pads, it's not the children, it's the parents. That's my biggest concern. I see an issue for our 15, 16, 17 year old pool attendants who aren't lifeguards trying to control parents and heaven forbid that happens. I, I, go, I would vote just to open the splash pads, but I hope there isn't an issue with parents because if there was, I'd vote to shut them down just as quick. And that would be unfortunate for the people we hire. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Councilor Longo. But if I'm not mistaken, I think when we hire people for these positions, they're usually university age kids or coming out of grade 12. So they're uh, usually 18 years and older. Am I correct when I say that? Where's Curtis? Uh, are you still on? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'm still here. You're correct on that. Um, typically, uh, the students are going into university or have been there a couple of yeah, years. So, um, so they would be approximately 18 to 20 years of age. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just, just a question to Curtis, if I could, since uh, he's, he is on the line. He did the report and I know he gave us a bunch of recommendations. Um, he's the professional and I know I'm going to put you on the spot, Curtis, but what would you do? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. So I, I think all the councillors this evening have brought very valid points. Um, again, I'm the father of three, so I can relate to the concerns with uh, the COVID, um, getting COVID. I can also relate to the concerns of the angry parents, because um, I know if I showed up as a splash pad and, you know, you see all these teenagers running around through the splash pad, you're kind of wondering why there's teenagers in there and not younger kids. So it's going to be a process to manage. Um, it really will be. Um, but again, that's what we're going to have to train the staff for and speak to them and communicate vigorously with them about is uh, dealing with people and the correct messaging on this. So um, it'll be a challenge. I'm not going to lie. It, there's concerns. Um, but at the end of the day, it's something we can facilitate. And this is where we're looking at the council to say, is this something that you guys want staff to take on because we're prepared to do it? Um, but understanding the, the concerns, and it sounds like everybody does. Thank you. I got uh, Councillor. Are you done, Councillor Longo? I'm done. Thank okay. you. Okay, Councillor Hanley. Thank you very much. W with the splash pad, you know, I think, you know, with behavior, I think we just have to look how people are behaving right now. You know what? I've read in the paper nothing about any big fights at Costco or any big fights at Walmart or anybody getting out of hand because you got in line before me and you got your turn. People have been very sociable during this and have learned to cohabitate together in a more meaningful way than ever before. That's what it is. I've seen no reactions out there myself or have read any that people at the IJ have been fighting over spots. Think about it yourselves. Where have you read in social media that this has already been a problem in facilities that are already open? It hasn't been a problem, but I know people say in parents and kids, but the parents and the kids are already going out to places and that stuff. You know, there's parks and that stuff where people have been able to go and walk and they're having to social distance and that stuff. And, you know, people aren't fighting because you got through the gate at the park before me and that stuff. People have been learning during this COVID-19 that we have to take life a little bit differently and be laid back and be more patient and that stuff and, and wait our turn. I can see that. So for me, I'm thinking that it, it won't be an issue if we're trained properly. And as Councillor Wilson said, this is something that the province has said that we can do and move in the stage 
too. So they've made the decision for us. We need to manage how we're going to move that decision forward, as she says, and pick our options and that stuff. The health and the safety issue is going to be out there regardless. We have liability issues with everything in the city of Thorough. We just passed the concrete sidewalk contract tonight. There's a liability issue there if there's over a three inch height in the curb and someone hits it and trips. There's a liability issue if someone trips over the sidewalk crossing on Front Street where the construction's happening right now. So to me, liability and the, and the, and the responsibility is already out there. We just have to manage it and it's gonna be directed in a different way and how we're gonna operate. Because we must remember, this isn't only gonna be the summer of 2020, this is gonna continue for years to come. COVID-19 and post COVID-19 is not disappearing. This is something that's gonna, we're gonna live with for the rest of our lives and we're gonna to have to manage ourselves differently. And if we don't do it this year, we're behind the eight ball next year if we do move ahead. So that's the way I look at it. The province says we can do it. They're the health experts. They've given us the permission to move ahead. Our residents have suffered long enough. There's, I look at it, we need to look at them. And I'll tell you something, I can post just like I did earlier in regards okay. to the- Okay, okay uh, Councillor Hanley. Ahead. So I'm just letting you know, that's Thank what it is. You. Because okay. I'm looking out for the taxpayer. Thank you, Councillor Hanley. Councillor Decker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to piggyback off uh, Councillor Wilson and Councillor Hanley. I didn't realize that the pool hadn't been repaired yet, so um, I'm good with option two uh, with the splash pads, and I couldn't have said it better. Uh, so okay. I'd put a motion forward if we can vote. Well, in a, in a sec. I just... Um... Okay, is everybody done? I just want to Mr. say, Mr. Mayor, it's it's DeRose. I, I I my video's out, but I could hear you on the phone, so I don't know how I'm going to vote or if we do have a vote. So you're going to have to maybe do a recorded vote if there's any no, more voting. No, we can. Because... Uh, you can just say uh, I'll ask you what you're voting. Don't worry. Okay, thank you. Um, before we vote, I just want to say a few things. I, I as well didn't know that the pool wouldn't be ready to the end of July. And I think when you look at the logistics uh, to open the pool for one month, if we could get it open by then and train staff properly, is a tall order. Um, I believe that opening the splash pads is important because I believe our community uh, has responded well to COVID-19 and done everything we've asked. And I think that we have to start to, as the, as the province opens up, we have to give back to our, we're here to provide services to the community. And I think that that's an important service and uh, I'll be supporting myself. I believe option two is, uh, is a good option. Anyway, um, did you wanna bring something forward? Councillor Decker, did you wanna bring a, a motion? Yeah, I wanted to bring a motion forward to vote on the options that were uh, provided by staff. I'd like to uh, bring a motion to vote for option two to open the splash pads. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor because there's all different options. She's bringing a motion that we vote for option two. Um, can we have a recorded vote, Mayor? Yes, we can. Uh, for or against? Thank you. And um, then we'll, we'll go from there. If it's defeated, um, then we'll move on and we'll look at the other options. Is everybody good with that process? I don't want anyone after saying that uh, we didn't, we circumvented the process. We have a motion. There's been, seemed to be a lot of support for option two in the discussion. She's moving forward that option. We're gonna have a recorded vote on that option, okay? Option two, recorded vote, and I'll turn it over to the city clerk. Through you, Mr. Mayor, when I call your name, if you could say whether you're in favor or opposed. So the motion on the floor is to open splash pads only. Councillor DeRose. Opposed. Councillor Longo. In favor. Councillor Hanley. In favor. Councillor Sentence. Opposed. Councillor Decker. In favor. Councillor Neal. In favor. Councillor Kenny. I can't hear you, Councillor Kenny. Opposed. Okay. Councillor Wilson. In favor. Mayor Ugolini. In favor. That motion's carried. 
The motion's carried. So we're proceeding with option two, open splash pads only, okay? And now, we, um, we're gonna have to have a discussion on the uh, patios, but that'll get pulled on their bylaws. Uh, so we'll move through, any notices of motion? Go ahead, Councillor Hanley. I want to put a notice of motion in regards to the city's further interest or commitment to the Canada Games facility. And it's not a reconsideration vote. I'll discuss it with the clerk. July 7th? I don't know. There's the Councillor Hanley, will that come forward on July the 7th? Yes, it will come forward at Thank our you. next scheduled council meeting, and I will discuss that with you. In You'll the have way. to go through that because it, it's like it could be a reconsideration. I'll leave you with the clerk with that, okay? Yes. Thank you. I will get in touch with you, uh, Donna, during the week. Thank you very much. Bylaws. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Go ahead, Councillor Senton. Sorry about that. Thank you. Uh, I just, I, I thought we would be talking tonight. Uh, I had a bunch of calls about the Port Robinson Ferry. I don't, I don't know if this is the right point to, to do to, should I put a notice of motion for that to get that opened or do, do we need to discuss that at all? I, are you bringing a report on the Port Robinson Ferry, Jeff, on the next meeting? Okay, there'll be a report coming forward on uh, Port Robinson Ferry at the next meeting, okay? Thank you. Go Mr. ahead, Mayor, Councilor. I had a question too, sorry. I, I thought I read it somewhere in there, but uh, was there something in there about uh, parks, like play parks? I thought I read it somewhere in there, but maybe I'm crazy. The playgrounds are still closed according to the province, so. Oh, okay, okay, just okay. double checking. Thank That's you. That's not part of phase two. Okay. okay. Um, okay, are we done there? Okay, we're moving through to um, bylaws. Um, we'll do them separate. Well, we can do two. Um, okay, we'll do 87 first, okay? Um, being a bylaw, and again, these were all moved, but we'll do this one. It was moved by Councillor Sentence and seconded by Councillor Decker that uh, bylaw 87 2020 being a bylaw to amend the policy with respect to delegation of powers and duties of council. And uh, do you want to speak to that a little bit about where that's coming from? Through you, Mr. Mayor. The bylaws in front of you um, to give staff the delegated authority to approve um, outdoor patio extension applications as they come forward. There is an attached memo prepared by our manager of planning and she is available to take any questions should you have any. And there's also, uh, Mr. There's, a, uh, there's a piece in there about the, um, the cost and it's a decision of council um, whether we want to waive the patio fee, which is $200 for a new patio or $50 for an existing patio. Okay, that's all part of it. Can so, I speak on that, Mr. Mayor? Go ahead, Councillor DeRose. Yeah, I'm in favor of uh, uh, amending that they, that there should be no fees this, this summer. Uh, uh, people are hurting, businesses are hurting, uh, and... Uh, I, I honestly believe that we should waive the fees. Thank you. Okay. Can I get a seconder that uh, for that I have Councillor Kenny? Okay. Um, does anyone want to speak to this? I can tell you that uh, I've been I've had a lot of phone calls and I've been uh, relaying them on to our clerk and our uh, planning building department. We have a lot of interest in this patios, uh, a lot of uh, restaurants. Re uh, this is gonna be a real lifeline for them. And I think that uh, right now we probably have about six uh, restaurants that are interested and we could see that grow. Um, when I say restaurants, some of them are service clubs as well. So uh, these, uh, 
this is huge for them, but uh, that's why this has come forward because it's a uh, time sensitive. Um, as you know, patios can open as a Friday, and uh, so these restaurants are in time constraints. So, is there any um, one wants to speak to this bylaw? Go ahead, Councillor Neal. Yeah, just. Uh when you're talking about patios, are you talking about extensions that are not already there? Like yep. there's a, a number of communities that are allowing uh, extensions to their patios, uh, like Donnelly's, for instance, extending it out onto the sidewalk uh, beyond where they are now. And these um, are for both. There, if you have a patio or don't have a patio, the province, and while well, it's actually Argo, the liquor board is allowing both, okay? Okay. without applying for a permit as long as you have a permit. All right. Okay. Um, Councillor Decker. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think this is a great idea and we should say yes. Let's go ahead. Give them an opportunity to get their businesses uh, reopened and reestablished. Okay. Is there uh, anyone else wants to speak to this? Okay, so we're gonna uh, bring this bylaw forward with the amendment. The amendment is to waive the fees for this year. Am I correct? I'll let you read it. The motion on the floor is that all pat outdoor patio fees be waived for the 2020 season due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So that change will be incorporated into the bylaw. Is everybody good with that? Okay, so I have to read. Uh, uh, again, uh, bylaw 87 2020 being a bylaw to amend the policy and respect the delegation of powers and duties of council. And uh, where am I here? That's first reading of the bylaw. Being a and that the bylaw now be read a first time. All those in favor? Uh, I'm in favor, Mayor. Okay, opposed? Karen. I'm in favor, sorry. And that the bylaw just read a first time, be read a second and third time, and do pass, and the mayor and clerk do sign and seal any rule of this council to the contrary notwithstanding. All those in favor? Opposed. I'm in favor, Mayor. Okay, carry. So we have two outstanding bylaws to deal with now, and that is... Bylaw 85-2020 and bylaw 86-2020. Is there anybody that wants to pull and speak to those bylaws? Okay. Seeing that, seeing that, uh, and now has been read a first time. All those in favor? Opposed? I'm in favor, Mayor. Okay, carried. That the bylaws just read a first time. Be read a second and third time and do pass and that the mayor and clerk do sign and seal the same. Any rule of this council to the contrary notwithstanding. All those in favor? Opposed? I'm in favor, Mayor. Thank you. And now we turn to adjournment. Moved by Councillor Kenny, seconded by Councillor Neal, that this meeting is hereby adjourned at 9.32. All those in favor? Opposed? Carrie, thank you. Thank you. Have good night, everybody. Enjoy thank you. Your Have a good night, everyone.